Venus, a benefic planet that rules beauty, kindness, friendship, peace, prosperity, love, and romance is about to become visible for the first time in several months as she rises in the evening sky in the sign of cancer at 27 degrees. Indeed, this is powerful and positive because in her rise, she will also flow in a trine to Neptune retrograde at the late degree of the sign of Pisces and also to the god of surprises, Uranus, which is happy surprises in the sextile relationship she will have to him upon her rise. We're also going to talk a little bit about the star Procyon, and we're going to bring in a guest today. Guest star of my show is Venus expert astrologer Louise Eddington. We're going to bring her in because she has a lot of wisdom in general, but mostly about the star Venus, the, I mean, the planet Venus. And we're going to bring her in to talk about what this means for us collectively and individually. And we're going to also do the all signs part of this session. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lori Lothian. I am using the Western Tropical Zodiac whole sign houses. All of my videos are all signs. And I put about 30 videos out every 30, well, with the shorts, 30, 20 main videos out every month. If you would like to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Give me a try. Also, the only promotion I'm sharing is if you missed the chance to buy my 2024 All Signs bundle in the early sale last fall of like only 40 or 50 bucks, 49, 50 bucks, it's back on sale for $33 because although it's $77, you can buy the All Signs bundle for $33. It's my July summer sale or your sign, which used to be a $25 video uh, purchase, is now only $14. These are not available to the general public. These were privately sold last year, and the videos for the each sign are about 90 minutes long. Hey, you still have six months left in the year. Why not go ahead and do it? Now, Venus rising is auspicious, brings lucky and positive things, especially in her morning star iteration to you in the cancer part of your sky, but also Gemini, where she was in the heart of the sun on June the 4th. So let us bring Louise Eddington into our Zoom room today. Let me say a couple of things about Louise um, and how she would describe herself. Okay, so I got a little bio I created for her. Uh, Louise's, Lee, Louise Eddington is um, the owner of Cosmic Astrology as her brand. It's got an owl picture. She describes herself as a wisdom weaver, helping you to understand the cosmic blueprint of your natal sky. She uses symbolic language of astrology and her shamanic training to help her clients and her readers. We'll get to that. We have a new story that is integrative, spiritual, and mystical. She's also the author of three books, Modern Astrology, The Complete Guide to Astrology, and The Complete Guide to Tarot and Astrology. She is a prolific writer, and that's why you want to check her out on Substack, where her popular multi-thousand subscribers catch her daily news on her Cosmic Owl Daily Sky Report on Substack. I will put a link to her Substack in the description box below. I subscribe. I love her daily notes about the day ahead and the sky in general. Finally, she lives in Utah where she loves to take walks and by the way, is an intermittent faster. So let's bring Louise into our room and let's get rolling. Hello, Louise. I'll uh, just give yourself an unmute button. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's all my automatic settings. You're wearing red. I'm wearing my Venus Emerald. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just introduced you to the audience uh, before you got here. So I just finished the intro. Welcome. Thanks and, for having me on again, Laurie. Nice to oh, see you. You too <laughs> as well. Um, for some of you who've listened to my channel before, this is Louise, I don't know, seventh time visiting. Um, mm -hmm. And Louise is the reason that I am doing astrology professionally. It was taking one of her Venus retrograde classes in 2018 that turned my world inside out and upside down. So thank you, Louise, for being the impetus for me to start this path. I'm already planning the next one as well. Starts in February next year. That's right. <laughs> next day. Next, uh, um, April, we're going to see Venus in the heart of the sun from her retrogradation. And that's a magical 40 day journey. And we'll be hopefully sharing some more details from you about what that mm -hmm. looks like in the sign of Aries. I believe she's going Aries. in at two mm -hmm. degrees, correct? Yes. That's yeah, it's right. exciting. Right on my Mercury. Yeah. Right on my Mercury. <laughs> believe me, I'll be jumping in that one. Two degrees from my south node. So, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll join you in that one for sure. Yeah. Um, so, what today's conversation is about the heliacal rise of Venus as she becomes visible in the late degrees of the sign of Cancer. Mm. Oh, and I'm going to lean into you a lot in our time together. We're doing about a half hour before I, I dive into all signs by myself. Yeah. Um, 
first question I have for you as a Venus expert, as as, as well as many other things I shared mm -hmm. about what you do, um, there's a lot of interesting conversation uh, I find about when a planet really becomes visible. <laughs> and this is talking about Venus 10 degrees from the sun at 27 degrees of Cancer. Mm -hmm. But what about the idea that a lot of astrologers are looking for that like way down the pipeline end of July, 15 degrees away from the sun? I'd love to hear what you think about that. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a big fan of actually looking at the sky. <laughs> and Venus is going to be an evening star for the next uh, journey till till she goes retrograde in Aries. And she officially, I can actually share my screen quickly. If you, oh, if I'd love to. Yeah. Let me give you, I'll absolutely give you co-host permission too. I think it automatically does that. Let me send okay. you, I think you, I think you get to do everything I do. So let me add that. Little yeah. feature for you. Hang on a sec. I'll get you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, there we are. And more. I'll just make you a co-host. And I believe you can do it. You have all the power. <laughs> oh, well, I was I was taught that it was 10 degrees like you. So, you know, that's um, I, I kind of use that and I talk about 10 degrees, but it does depend where you are in the world. And at your elevation, where what sign Venus is going to rise in, and so on and so forth. I would say 10 degrees is just a guide. So this is timeanddate.com, and you, anybody can look this up. This is um, free, and they can look for where they live. If you put in, if you search planets visible in the night sky, and then search for where you live, I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, this will show you exactly where all the planets are and where they rise. So officially, Venus is visible now in Salt Lake City, but I'm not going to see her because I don't have a good view of the Western horizon. She's really difficult to see because she's not yet cleared the beams of the sun. She's still very... Um, you know, burned out by the light of the sun because uh, she is just going to, she will set just after the sun. So it's going to be really hard to see her. Right. So then, so then if you go way down to the 31st of July, say, for example, she's still going to be difficult to see. As an evening star, she rises very slowly. When she rises as morning star after her um, retrograde, she rises really fast up in the sky and she's visible really quickly. Mm -hmm. So so the heliacal rise, 10 degrees, is a guide and that's what most astrologers use. But a lot of astrologers now are talking about what you can actually see in the sky. Right. <laughs> So yeah, I would yeah. I would assume at certain latitudes she's easier to see than other latitudes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And again, that depends on the sign that she's mm -hmm. in and mm -hmm. where you are in the world. So it's not the same for every heliacal rise as an evening star either. So. Right, and Venus being just mm -hmm. such a bright being in the heavens, you know, mm -hmm. would be probably visible sooner than say a, a dimmer planet coming yes. up beneath yeah. the sun's beams you know venus was not visible for several months i think it's uh, mm. according to the astronomy site i was using i think it was march april may more yeah. or less difficult to see so she's kind of been hiding from all, all of us and yeah. now we, we peek out and see her uh, starting july 9th and as time goes on i believe her most bright brilliant visibility might be january or february which she's yeah far, yeah farthest from the sun that's right just before she starts to really kind of disappear okay. again for the retrograde so another tool people can use as well is uh, solar system scope another one that's free this is like now <laughs> you know so this is earth sun venus so you can see she's kind of just dipping out from behind the sun right so, but you can see why she'd be really difficult to see right now so that's a really great program what was that one can you name it again for our people yeah, Solar System Scope. It's, nice. a, it's a download, but it's free. So. Oh, that's wonderful. That is such a great visual aid to see the situation clearly. And what we also want to remind people is that she's on the other side of the sun from mm -hmm. Earth. In the, we call that a superior position. And mm -hmm. that's different than the retrograde, right, Louise? Yeah, when she's retrograde, from our perspective, clearly, because planets don't actually go backwards, <laughs> that means uh, she's 
she's actually between the sun and the earth and just kind of makes a loop from our perspective. And, and she's, because the sun is so bright, even though she's between us and the sun, that means we can't see her. So, yeah. 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 And then, but then planets that are apparently retrograde are closer to earth. And then yes, they're they also are. more potentially influential in some way. Mm. I, I've, I always kind of look at it like it, how it feels to me is that when the planet is retrograde and closest to earth, it's energy is more impactful on us personally. Mm -hmm. And she's, when she's uh, behind the sun and, and we can't see her for weeks, her energy is harder to access. And so, you know, that's why I, well, I dreamed the Venus retrograde class and it's a very powerful class, as you know. It, it's that to me is the time for us to do our inner work with mm -hmm. Venus. So uh, wonderful. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like she's on the other side of, of the sun kind of soaking up new information when we can't see her. <laughs> well, that, no, I love that. I love that. So the other side of the sun, meaning, you know, kind of closer to the, to the vast universe, the heavens, you know, but between mm -hmm. the earth and the sun kind of in the zone where we're, you know, intimate with her. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. 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 I love that. I love that analogy. Yeah. Okay. So now that we covered the idea that she's rising perhaps at nine degrees at 27 degrees of cancer. Did you bother digging up any Sabians for 27 cancer for fun? Well, my, I didn't, my I software. didn't, but I wonder, cause yeah. I know you do the but Chandra. I can, well, I can look at them, but my, yeah. my software actually gives 10 degrees apart at, on, um, at 29 degrees, which oh. is. Because you're is, waiting for the per the perfect. Okay, so we'll go with 29 because it looks to me on the ninth on the ninth of July she'll be at 27 degrees. Yeah, so it's on the tenth that she'll be okay. At, and and of course that is a very powerful degree because it's the anoretic degree, which is you know like a border crossing degree, a very um, potent liminal degree, mm -hmm. and almost right right after sh her official heli heliacal rise, um, she slips into Leo. But I have looked up these. I love it. See, this is why I've got the expert in here, guys. Okay, <laughs> so she's really more perfectly 10 degrees apart at 29 degrees of Cancer. Mm -hmm. Love to hear what you've come up with on the symbology of that. Well, the Sabian symbol is really interesting, especially in light of what's going on in the world. <laughs> um, it's daughter of the American Revolution. Oh, you've is, got to be kidding. Yeah, I have. I'm not. And <laughs> uh, But this one is respect for tradition. Now, I guess that one could be uh, taken both ways, and I'm not going to get into which way I would take it. Because it's which tradition are you upholding? You know, it's um, anyway, that's that's the symbol. Can so, I add uh, something to that symbol for a second? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I love that because this, um, first of all, I'm I'm really into the idea that women are rising to more power based on the um, mm -hmm. solstice ingress chart. And I did a video on that. But when we look at that moon that Venus was uh, co-joined with on July the 5th, that new moon on Sirius, the dog star, mm -hmm. the sun of the United States of America with female Venus or feminine energy Venus next to it, I just kind of had a vibe that that could indicate new moon, new beginning, leadership, USA, female. Oh, I daughter of the revolution. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, I'm not sure it'll happen right on this election, but I think it might happen in the next administration or something. Well, yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. And because she's rising from her conjunction to the sun on uh, Gemini 14 degrees on the 4th of June, mm -hmm. we also have to remember that this is a reset button that is about a four-year uh, trend line. It, oh, it is. It's it's four years and eight years as well. So, yeah. you know, the, they're the two kind of Venus cycles. So Venus will meet the sun again in Gemini uh, when she's retrograde in four mm -hmm. years time and then in eight years time again directly and incidentally right. that Gemini star which is called the Venus star point came in in the 60s and we're getting a lot of um, uh, 
throwback to the 60s in other ways in the astrology you're, as well you, so. you, you almost took the words out of my mouth because i loved it in ariel gutman's uh, venus star point book which is the defining book about all things venus mm. what i really liked was how she pointed out that since the 60s the american elections have always been preceded by a venus conjunction to the sun in gemini always yeah every yeah. four years yeah and, and she I'm, makes I'm, the case I'm, yeah and i'm certified in her work and will actually be teaching it and Oh. See, for my members that you can find on the Substack, but if anybody yes and just to remind you guys cosmic owl astrology louise eddington mm -hmm. i'll put all the links to all of her things including Substack mm -hmm. below which i also said in the intro yeah anything about gemini you know the whole energy of gemini being conversational and and more mm -hmm. vivacious and full of ideas and you certainly can see some of the presidents we've had sort of fulfilling that mandate say the uh, clinton era for sure um, yeah you know the obama as well being a kind of more gemini energy yeah, and changes in alliances as well, and oh, and oh, it's yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a funny star to be under for the elections in a way, really, because it's so mutable and changeable. It is <laughs> mutable and changeable, but it's also the sign of the brothers, uh, the the Castro mm -hmm. Alex twins. And I remember when mm -hmm. Obama and Biden were together, there was like bromance, is what they call it. Was yeah. you know, <laughs> but it's funny because it is the Gemini twins, which are the brothers. I know. And it was hilarious, and the memes were fantastic. The memes were <laughs> like, I know. I know. I think their bromance is faded, but oh, well, you know, yeah. but yeah, so the archetype is there. So I guess I'd say to uh, you today, how do you see when Venus rises after her conjunction to the sun uh, in terms of which sign, in this case, the very end of cancer, mm. how do you interpret that yourself in terms of the overlaying energies that, that are unfolding until the next conjunction mm. uh, in the end of March with uh, the Aries two point two degree point? Well, personally, because it's that, potent degree the anoretic degree I really feel it you know cancer is the sign of birth it's the womb it's the mother it's nurturing it's but it's also safety and security and protection I kind of feel like it's gonna birth um, something very new in the U.S. sort of a return to stability but um, but in a new way kind of preserving what's good <laughs> And what's not getting rid of not what's not working thanks to Pluto ditching everything in um, in Capricorn. So I think it might be even with Gem, you know, with it being a Gemini star. And I've talked about this a lot um, in over time. It could even be kind of a shoring up of things in the Constitution that have been able to be broken, shall we say, or played with by those that choose to. And, and just really kind of firming up the, the foundations of what this country was built on. So Well, yeah, well, with the United mm. States still in that Pluto return energy, which, of course, you know, French Revolution, American Revolution, mm -hmm. um, fall, fall of Rome and rebirth of Rome twice. You mm -hmm. know, what's interesting is that I was just listening the other day to a YouTube video uh, on the new Heritage Foundation 2025 project, 2025. And oh, it was yes. Yeah, I, did, I just discovered it. But one of the things that really struck me was uh, within that 900-page uh, document was the wording that along the lines of this is an American revol a new American revolution. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was a document or one of the co-creators of it who said something like, and uh, something along the lines of, I should I should have kept it. He you said know. it will be peaceful if the left allow it. Thank you. We're in a Amer new American revolution, and it will be peaceful if the left allows it. Now, a re it's just not civil war. It's just, he's talking about the American Revolution. Now that was to oppose taxation, to oppose British rule, to oppose. Mm. You know, that was against an occupying power in essence, because the settlers were dictated to by another country from which they came, Europe and England mostly. Mm. Well, England. So I mean, revolution you know against what i thought like what's uh, i know well i'll tell you what it's against it's about anybody than other than um colonial white males claiming their power so you know it's against women's rights it's against any you know marginalized people it's against immigrants it's against anything like that they they kind of feel like the constitution um, was made for them so 
Well, and to me, it's also, mm -hmm. it, I, I don't know, there's just something, I can't remember all the details of why I kept declaring this in the solar ingress video, but mm. it's one of my major predictions uh, that I made in April about women rising to political leadership. And of course, yeah. we've seen that uh, all over the place, whether you like the, what those women are doing or not, Mexico president, yeah. Marie Le Pen in France yes. now, yeah. the far right uprising. It's just women rising up to greater levels yeah. Uh, in engagement in political discourse, engagement in political mm -hmm. power and leadership. And so it doesn't mean good or bad. It's just a new development. Yes, it and is. I, and I yeah. really feel, I think we, it's well overdue because whichever mm -hmm. you, whatever you think about that female's politics, it's still time for that feminine energy oh, to be engaged. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not even a feminist. And I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm low key, not that, you know, I don't know why I just never got yeah. into feminism for some I'm, reason. I'm a, I'm a feminist in my own way. I would say it. I'm not a feminist in, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you do have to do things this way. <laughs> yeah. And I want to also tell the audience that, I mean, I am not engaged in U.S. politics. I'm a Canadian. Right? I'm, I probably lean a little bit in Canada to center, left of right of center now because of my mm -hmm. politics in this country. But we're not talking to remind everyone in the audience. We're not talking politics. We're talking no. astrology in yeah. relationship to the sky. So don't yeah. get down there and say we're a bunch of left. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, left, Lefty left liberals. We're not. And I'm no. not. I'm just, we're just well, doing I, I used to be. I'm more center now but um because yeah. I just want I just want stability back you know and and to for people to kind of start working together so yeah yeah I hear yeah, you yeah. I hear you <laughs> yeah, so yeah. One of the other thought I had about the rising of Venus now that I know she's 29 is she's going to be engaging very tightly after having mm -hmm. sextiled Uranus which is to say some things that were going on that were surprising perhaps uh, just shortly before the rise, are going to also be engaged further because it's mm -hmm. the be before she became visible. But then in the as she becomes visible, she's in that really beautiful trine to Neptune, yeah. who's retrograde at twenty nine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, which is kind of the the loved up aspect, isn't it? It's, but it's also the rose colored glasses, and of course Neptune is also at the station point, pretty much still. Yes, even, I think so. Even even then. Um, not exactly. I think Neptune may have moved one minute by then, but yeah, you know, pretty much because Neptune's yeah. so vast. Um, so this is kind of going to, I, I feel kind of going to be about letting go of a lot of things as well with Neptune in Pisces about to start moving retrograde. But then, of course, you mentioned that sextile to Uranus, which I think is today, actually, and, and also a square to Eris. Um, all of this was connected to the Venus retrograde last summer, um, where that was all in Leo. So Venus is going to start trekking back at all at, over things that began um, last, last July to September. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. year, she, she spent a long time in Leo. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. So yeah. it's kind of like, you know, Leo kind of, you know, that was a retrograde. It, it There's stuff coming up for me around a uh, fall of kind of the king royalty, you know, all of that kind of stuff. People mm -hmm. kind of being brought down to their knees a little bit. And we're kind of seeing that. Um, yeah, I believe she's stationed bit. at 28 degrees of Leo <laughs> last year. She did. Uh, maybe July 28th. Or twenty second. Yeah. It was twenty second. It was twenty second. Feast of the Magdalene. Yeah. Feast of the yes. Magdalene. Yes. So, so that's interesting because that's basically on Donald Trump's ascendant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can see things coming back into his world connected to last summer as she moves into mm -hmm. Leo as well on July the eleventh through to about three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on. Our sky is incredibly busy <laughs> with all kinds mm -hmm. of layers of meaning. Oh, so it is, and the endure, and of course the star point on August the thirteenth at twenty Leo was square to Uranus. So this sextile to Uranus is ah okay we're bringing, moving yeah yeah we're moving that narrative <laughs> forward a bit mm -hmm. so uh, my other thought i had to ask you about uh regarding the rise of venus well i usually take mm -hmm. a look at the gemini part of the sky and go everybody listing your gemini whole sign house if you don't mind is literally where this rebirth has taken place yet again every four years since the 1960s so you'll rebirth something in your gemini mm -hmm. story but assuming we stick with the the nine deg ten degree orb and her maybe her first 
first glimmer of decent visibility could be mm. 10 degrees, then we're really saying we're birthing something really anew in Gemini, but then in the sign one over, we're also perhaps rising. You know, the yeah. archetype of a rise is an archetype of something that lifts up. How do you interpret that? Lifting up energy in our in our in our cancer sky for each of us over the next yeah. nine months? Yeah, lifting it up, but uh, she is going to be evening star Venus, and which is the more receptive, um, relationship oriented love goddess Venus. So yes, lifting up that area of the chart for sure, but but also with more of a focus, uh, which I kind of already talked about, where I've shifted um, is about kind of you know coming back together again, creating those, birthing those new relationships and. And a lot of uh, kind of self-care as well, building up your own security. I mean, for me, it's rising um, in my relationship house, you know, the seventh house, mm -hmm. significant relationships. And I see that already of kind of building these new relationships and new al alliances. I felt that happening already so right right mm -hmm. well that that's that i like the idea of like really thinking about all the areas of uh mm. archetypal energy that cancer can represent like what we need to nurture where we need to be safe where we need to mm -hmm. self-protect where we need to sometimes be protective of something in our lives you know yeah. i mean there's crabby claws on that cancer <laughs> you know just like there's a scorpion stinger i mean some of the these water signs have weapons at hand <laughs> <laughs> they do yeah oh and and you know the cancer crab she's it's very tenacious and and and, and very uh, kind of pulls down you know the shell and pulls in the pincers and can uh, really protect you and yours if you like so and and move that. sideways and move sideways yes you know yeah. so you know, you can get where you need to go in a positive rising way but you don't have to yeah. go straight at it you can do yeah. it in kind of a new way of doing it um mm -hmm. The other thought I had about it was um, there was a thought about, oh, cardinal, the cardinality, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, all the cardinal energy signs are initiative oriented, uh, not afraid of new beginnings. Uh, that mm -hmm. can be very much about energetically leadership in general, um, cardinal energy. So there is that energy that's yeah. embedded in the way we succeed or rise mm -hmm. or fulfill something in a Venusian way over the next few months. I mean, I looked at most of the time, I think this is an Ariel Gutman, correct me if I'm wrong, almost like you're giving birth over the next nine months. Months, or you're just dating over the next nine months something you truly wish to birth because it exactly. is about nine nine and a half months right from it's it's oh, i think it's 9.4 to be yeah. precise which is the length of a human pregnancy you know it's <laughs> it's so it literally is birthing something new yeah. every every nine and a half months and each nine and a half months is slightly different you know. Right. And we'll birth something yeah. new from the Aries time frame mm -hmm. of, of next April, March, April. And that makes sense to me. It's funny because I was a Vedic astrology is very clear that she's the goddess of the sperm and the ovum, you know, literally mm -hmm. like and I'm like, okay, yeah. yeah, they got they figured this out. She's like a she's making things gestate and come into being constantly. Oh yeah, she's she's so important to our human um growth and development and what we're creating and birthing you know I mm -hmm. think I think uh, uh for a long time Venus was kind of a, a little bit discarded in the astrological language until um you know we discovered this strong Venus star point work that makes the pentagram which I wear all the time and makes these five pointed stars it's got this almost perfect pattern Venus mm -hmm. is the higher um, sister of Earth energy in many ways. She She's probably, in terms of our personal creativity, relationship energy and things, the most important. Planet. Of course, they're all important because they work together, but... <laughs> yeah, and I kind of think of that as, you know, the planets between Earth and Sun, Mercury and Venus are more yeah. into, into our personal experiences. Mm -hmm. And they, as we move outward, of course, we, you know, if you go all the way to Pluto, we're getting quite uh, titanic transpersonal tra generational forces. But yeah. there's something about that intimate space between King Soul, which represents the divine intelligence, really, that mm -hmm. runs the show in some ancient philosophies. And the inner planets between Earth and, and yeah. Sun. Yeah. Yeah. They they I mean, they're called personal planets for a yep. reason. You know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So lastly, I would say this. There's a star there, Procyon, and it's at 27 degrees or so of the sign of 
of cancer, but even Ooh. at 29, she's still with an orb. And that's the lesser serious in the, the dog star oh. is, you know, yeah, serious, the dog star, but then this is called in quotes, the lesser serious. And uh, so it's, it's literally uh, in the lesser dog of the dog star constellation, big dog, little dog, I guess. Canis you know, you know I'll be looking that one. Absolutely. Yeah. And when I think about Procyon too, it's always given this really great, like it's a nature of Mercury and or Mars, depending on the ancients, but it's always given a great write-up on the happy softwares for executive capacity, daring do, and all of this stuff. Right? But it okay. has some downsides. It's actually known for watch out for dog bites. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Seriously, I was oh, listening to funny, yeah, funny. I think I was listening to somebody, maybe Austin Kopek, talk about a literal dog bite story during a Procyon <laughs> event in somebody's life. So oh, there yeah. is that. But I wanted to say, you know, she did s situate herself on Sirius, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the really important star in the United States chart and also just a good star in terms of spiritual alchemy and, and wealth and renown. Mm -hmm. And this little star too, Procyon, is also associated in ancient mythology to do with wealth and renown as well. Mm. So we also have this kind of glorious star that she's just been sitting with and she's now moving slightly away from, and then she's visible as she's doing that, as well mm. as that flow to Neptune, you know? So, mm. and I don't know, you said rose-colored glasses, but I don't mind the trines between planets. Oh. Well, I, I mean, I mean, rose colored glasses in a good way. Actually. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe like a, renew it's, it's a renewal kind of, of like visionary where, where you can you can see the good in the world and you can start mm -hmm. being grateful for it instead of sitting in this doom and gloom like the earth's like, you know, the whole everything's falling apart. and We're all yeah. doomed. Um, I like I like being able to put my rose colored glasses on and look around and look, see that there are some good things in the world, too. You know, yeah. <laughs> so with, yeah. And I like that Neptune vibe in the sense that it's like, well, Neptune's very wise and old at 29, even if he's mm -hmm. at turmoil field. Right. The yeah. last degree of a sign can be kind of a culminating like you've climbed the mountaintop now and you're mm -hmm. ready to depart and you reach some kind of wisdom quotient. And so Neptune, even though he's retrograde and I kind of think I like the analogy of the wave is receding or the tides going in and so after yeah. we've had a whole bunch of direct motion neptune full of like spin cycle delusion illusion, <laughs> confusion and 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 white white fog coming all over the place and it all kind of pulls back and i always think of neptune retrograde like that's what's left on the shore oh i see there's a beautiful I know. It's kind of yeah. washed away what's what's underneath kind of what's like the yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. as he's retrograde, he just say, I'm going to go back. And he's going to retrograde, mm -hmm. for, I think, until sometime in December. Memory serves me. December the 7th. Back, yeah, he's <laughs> going to be revealing things. And Venus is going yeah. to be saying, yes, and I'm in on it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So Venus, yeah. you know, love, beauty, kindness, friendship, peace, um, art, uh, creativity. Um, give me more words. You're, you're the expert. Oh, well, she's everything. She's she's manifestation to me as well. She is uh, what your earthly desires are. Uh, she's also kind of our social mores and values. There's so much to Venus. She's um, well, yeah. I love you call yourself a wisdom weaver. That's how I introduced mm -hmm. you. But I almost feel like with Venus and desire and Neptune vision and mm -hmm. It could be like the dream weaver energy. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And especially if you think of like Neptune is at the last degree of the zodiac, not just the last degree of a sign. Mm -hmm. And I always think of Pisces where, where Neptune is as almost like the amniotic fluid. You know, if you if you listen to the old creation myths, we always come from chaos or or oceans or water. And kind of we emerge from it. Venus emerged from the ocean mm -hmm. on a shell in the myth. And, and so, you know, we're really on the verge of birthing something very, very new. When Neptune moves into Aries, Uranus moves into Gemini, Saturn moves into Aries. But I think this, this aspect at the um, anoretic degrees of the two signs, Cancer and Pisces, is really birthing something very new and something's going to emerge from it over yeah. time Not yeah the, because it know. will be yeah <laughs> 2000 and it will be don't tell me i know this february 2026 that neptune finally gets to, into with fully me, fully into Aries. fully yeah. into there's a bit of a yeah. next summer there's an like a tiptoe in there and then a backing yeah. up and that will yeah. uh, overlay with this this really cool neptune position that venus is initiating something that really has a four-year time span as well yeah 
Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. We, we were born in very exciting times. Weren't we? I know. We get to see <laughs> yeah, Saturn and Neptune and Aries together. Uh, you know, and of course, and of course, the next Venus star point, the retrograde one, you know, is almost exactly where Neptune and Saturn will be moving to. They'll be conjunct at zero Aries. Um, I can't remember exactly when that is, but you know, the, mm. and that's the first degree of the zodiac. So we're well, wow. I I don't think. Yeah, I, I think where we're going is not going to look like anything we've known before. To be honest. Well, I do too, and I have a lot of theories about why we'll have to do that on another vi- video. Yeah. Aliens yeah. And, and spaceships, and stuff. but you <laughs> but know, this also- is, but this is a part of where we're going. It is a part of where we're yeah. going. We we need a paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. We don't need a revolution. Yeah. We don't need a new politician. We don't need a new. We need a paradigm shift collectively. Oh, and you know, v- Venus in her detriment, star pointing in Aries, is finally coming out of that within twelve years. I think she's going to be complete and starting yeah. to star point in Pisces. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is going to give us like Venus in her exaltation in the sign of you know, come on, Pisces. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it this way. I, I often do this, Louise. I don't know if you do. You know, in the old world chart. The, uh, the 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 moon die chart for the world in the ancient tradition uh the world is a, a cancer rising mm-hmm. and that puts pisces in the ninth house which is called oh. the house of god which is called yeah. the house of god it's the house yeah. of heaven, you know and so pisces that's why we always say spiritual mystic transcendent pisces too and and yet it is going to be that new energy where she begins to work her magic in only about 12 years and for the rest of our lives Oh, definitely, because we're going to be, I mentioned a Venus five-pointed star, which I don't have time here to go into, mm-hmm. but but we're always under a five-pointed star. Once this Aries star is finished and the very last Scorpio star point uh, will be under Libra, Pisces, Capricorn, Gemini, and Leo, of course, the sign of the sun, and the star point is when the sun and Venus meet. But all those four other points are Venus ruled in a way because Gemini and Capricorn, Venus, if you look at esoteric astrology, Venus is the ruler of those two signs too. Oh, I didn't know that about the esoteric astrology, but then you add that she'll be working her magic in her her traditional exaltation sign, uh, Jupiter's domain of Pisces in the ancient tradition. She's now- Libra. And Libra, because she's been in Libra, but she goes back to Scorpio in four years, 26 October probably, and then back again four years into Libra. So she's in her natural domain in Libra. She's start pointing in her exaltation home, esoteric, you said, okay, place- well and she's leaving the place of war aries where she's debilitated and she keeps star pointing under the weather i'm like i'm dead a star point but i'm not feeling good here <laughs> too many warriors in the mirror <laughs> with me you know well, we've, we've we've been under aries and scorpio for just for over a hundred years and yeah. uh, you know in in traditional astrology which you practice more you know they're both martian <laughs> so they're both signs of war over and yeah. over again and we've had yeah, two yeah. world wars for goodness mm-hmm. sakes so we've had mm-hmm. worlds all wor- world wars all of our life our wars and, and cake takeovers but now we're coming becoming a global community on a pocket of real estate that's increasingly uh distressed by solar mm-hmm. activity and climate activity caused mm-hmm. by multiple factors and so don't tell me in the co- in the comments it's oh. it's not because of this or that many <laughs> things are changing our environment that is yeah. making it less sustainable for humanity yeah at the same time, we're coming out of a period of time where if we don't figure out how to work together, we're going to be screwed. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically it. Basically it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so thank uh, God thank God, we're going into a Venusian era Yes, uh, I know. For, for well over 100 years. So, so any one of you guys who are thinking, my poor kids who were born into this, don't worry, it's all going to turn out in the <laughs> end where we're going to go with that. Well, yeah. okay, so um, we're gonna. I'm going to do the all signs alone because I know you're really not into that. You and Adam Ellen Boss here, you guys both go, poor Adam, he just did the, uh, got two girls on his channel, two women astrologers, not girls, they're young though, mm-hmm. uh, to be co- a- allied with him in uh, astrology overviews for the month and stuff. But when the all signs comes up, he always says oh the all signs <laughs> I, I, I really oh, hate all I hate doing all signs I know I know the audience loves it but it yeah is, yeah uh, but I know anyway. um, <laughs> so, so I want to share one more thing about Louise too before we finish <laughs> up unless you have any other thoughts about a, like a Chandra symbol or anything for 29 that you might want to open up to or uh, the daughters of the revolution makes me like just oh gap. doesn't it yeah so but, but let me read you the Chandra symbol and I'll let I'll just 
let people sit with it. So the Chandra symbols were channeled by a guy called John Sandbach, and it's wild grapes growing everywhere. Oh, you're kidding me. I, can I tell you something you don't know? Yeah. Did you know that the asteroid of wine and grapes Bacchus is currently sitting at like zero or one degree of the sign of brain come back online, cancer? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, Not cancer, not cancer, not cancer. Where is it? I know where that asteroid is. So it made me think of it. Venus is going to move into Leo. Where is Bacchus? Bacchus is, okay, I'm going to go find him. It really is. She's about to bump into a connection to Bacchus. I'm trying to remember where Bacchus mm. is. Bacchus is at one degree Scorpio. Oh. So be basically, as she rises at 29 and then moves into one Leo, she's about to jump into the God of Grapes and like into oh. a square to the God of Grapes. Yeah. How crazy weird is that? Because Bacchus is moving mm. around, right? He's not always sitting at one yeah, Scorpio. No. And, back, and so Bacchus is conjunct dwarf planet Halmea as well, which is like the egg-shaped um, uh, dwarf planet that I think is also bringing in this energy of rebirth. So there you go. Wow. So the dwarf planet Halmea is also a creatrix, right? Birthing yes, universes from, from yeah. her womb nonetheless? Well, she birthed from every part of her body and also could regenerate herself after she kind of aged so well <laughs> that really focuses us even more intensely on like the aftermath as venus moves into leo the sign of leaders mm -hmm. then we're coming into this creatrix zone and scorpio as well as bacchus now bacchus doesn't just have to be about wine folks you know he can be no. about all kinds of states mm -hmm. of you know be consciousness but yeah. i just find that just fascinating so the grapes sanba mm. Okay, but perfect. but is, is, isn't that an, such an abundant symbol then? It court, yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful of growth. Yeah. yeah, 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 and also celebration mm -hmm. because I think most of yeah. us think about grapes in terms of fermentation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, ideally it's like the weddings and you know the celebratory yeah. moments of life that we did traditionally would you know use the fermented grape. Today's culture, it's a, an addictive big industry to get people to have wine o'clock and you know yes. for alcohol and just. <laughs> orgies so i mean i'm actually turning off of alcohol as i get older i i, I don't drink at all barely anymore uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well because it's not supposed to be like a daily event like the native tradition with tobacco i, I snorted amazonian tobacco mm -hmm. up my nose in a ceremony by top of my head lifted off but they use tobacco <laughs> ceremonially exactly right not well, as a and daily like giving us giving my cigarette or my vape and we've mm -hmm. lost touch with some of the more ceremonial reasons to use mm -hmm. intoxicant intoxicants mm -hmm. rather than to use them as a daily crutch you know exactly my lecture yeah. from the world there yep okay so uh louise i want to share where you people can find you beside oh, your yeah. website which i'll have in the description box louise eddington and cosmic owl google will get you everywhere I introduced yeah. your books but i also want to say that she writes an amazing Substack column it's almost always daily um i get it in my inbox i'm a, an official subscriber actually what i love about louise's writing and that's what she really is is a writer uh three books later she knows that yeah it's that, <laughs> it's that you know she's going to make you think about the sky not tell you what the sky is and mm -hmm. it, it's very evocative writing and it gives you open-ended questions rather than answers and so I really appreciate her astrology writing and it's one of my favorite places to go a morning I yeah, <laughs> love it with a morning cup of coffee I did shout you out in a recent video I can't remember which one but I was talking about the fact that you reminded me of Saturn's stationary degree relative mm. to the charts of Joe Biden and uh, Donald Trump. And I did mm -hmm. tell everybody that that reminder from your column is why I, I was talking about it. But um, if you love to read uh, good content with your morning coffee or afternoon, you know, whatever you drink, kombucha or more, even evening wine in moderation, <laughs> <laughs> you want to go check out Louise's column on Substack and I'll have the right. link to subscribe. And then you can subscribe for free, correct? People can, or is it always uh, a fake aid? I don't, I don't remember how. Yeah, I think, the, I the, the, I've, I've moved the daily content behind the paywall because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I spend a lot of time on the daily. Yes. Um, I, I make it public now and again, but I do a weekly one for free subscribers if they want a, a feel of my writing. You know? Okay. Yeah. But it's super affordable. I, I don't know. I think it it's is. like nine, nine or 10 bucks a month, correct? Seven. 
Seven is even better as Canadian, it translates to 10. So yeah. therefore, for all of those uh, who would like something better to read than subscribe to than say the Washington Post, to check out <laughs> Louise's link for her sub stack below. And yeah. I, I tr- I, I'm telling you, you'll love her writing style if you like to read good writing. Well, Thanks. thank you so much. I'm surprised oh, you were read. I just you. love it. I was trying to Venus <laughs> up today and you went, oh, you full on Aries. Well, I thought about buying, um, yeah, or wearing something Venusian, but then I was just like, just want to wear this new thing that I bought. I, yeah, I really like. I like red on you. It looks great on yeah. you. You must be a, a winter or summer in the color palettes. Um, I am well, all royal colors really. So probably, mm. probably more winter. I think probably yeah. winter. Yeah, your complexion yeah, yeah. looks very winter to me. Mm. Well, that was wonderful. We're talking Venus stuff, and yes, Venus. We are. <laughs> Venus is conjunct the moon today. FYI. Yes, she is. Yes. I know. Perfect for two women to get very d- down Isn't with their wardrobe colors. <laughs> And I and I put my uh, boomsticks on. Oh, don't you love boomstick? Yeah, me too. I, I got my boomsticks here as well. <laughs> okay, guys, we're talking about a great makeup product. I probably should get, get in touch with the boomstick girl and say I wear it on all my videos. Let me. Well, know. Laurie, Laurie got me using it. So yeah, it's yeah, amazing yeah. product. Well, that was that was an amazingly fun conversation. It I'm going to let you go away, so I'll do the all signs by myself, right. so you don't have to grind through it. Okay, <laughs> peace out, everybody. Thank Thanks, you, Louise. Laurie. Have a wonderful Bye. day. Bye-bye. So it's just me, guys, and we're going to dive into how the All Signs is going to open up doors of rising opportunity in your cancer real estate of your natal sky. But also we're going to talk about how it's a rebirth of energy in your Gemini whole sign house in your natal sky, both the Gemini region and the Cancer region are highly activated between about July the 9th, as Venus becomes visible, 9th, 10th, and into moving forward, um, her reset button with Mars at the end of, I mean, with Mars, with the sun in the sign of Mars, Aries, at the end of March next year. So let's get rolling. We always start with Aries so people know what we're on when they come into the room. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, check out the the sale of my um, All Signs videos for 24. You'll never Never regret it because you get a like a deep dive of 90 minutes into your signs year this year's uh, astrology or by all signs. So you can listen for sun, moon and rising in the bundle for 33 bucks and share the 90 minutes times 12 videos. That's a lot of time content links to private unlisted videos with your friends, family, and you can look for your kids and your friends and your spouse. So you can cover a lot of folks. Okay. Let's get talking about the sky for Aries first. Let's cue to that part of real estate. Just before I get ready to start, the Aries Louise texts me and she says, <laughs> you would not believe what the Pleiadian symbol is for 29 degrees of cancer. She says, it is Pleiadian symbol, an ancient woman remembering the glories of past kings. Oh my God, an ancient woman remembering the glories of past kings. Well, we're getting a lot of female power going on. So let's get going and talk about the Aries first, and let's roll through all signs about this rising Venus narrative. I just thought it might be fun, just fun, to draw a goddess card. This is the Goddess Power Oracle deck. I'm visiting my sister, and I just saw it on the bookshelf. Venus is a goddess. So everybody gets a card draw and a general delineation of what this might mean for them. So I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to go into the sky story. And we're going to start talking about the energy of the Venus rising on July 9th or 10th. Uh, According to Louise's software, we're going to move it to the 10th based on the wisdom of the software or even the 11th. No, it's going to be the 10th. Let's get it forward to exactitude kind of thing. Get her up to 29 degrees. There we go. 19. Yeah, I see what Louis says. It is more exact on July the 10th. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move us to Aries. And then we're going to roll into your stories. And I really love the Venus stuff, guys. I hope you check out Louise's uh, Venus retrograde class. I'll be taking it uh, as well. I'll probably try to get people to jump in with me next spring. I find her classes incredibly good um, transformation energy. Um, we're moving it back. Sorry. I'm so slow today. Want to detox. So, all right, here we go. July the 11th. Now we want July the 10th. Go back a day. 
It's just because Venus is moving quickly. She's really going to be at 29 degrees, but in order to queue up the Aries, this is what is needed. If you're ever in the live premiere and you don't know what sign we're on, although I'm usually there to tell you, just look to the this side of the sky, to the left of your screen, and that's the rising sign. Um, you can listen for your rising sign, which has to do with home. I mean, your your character, everything about your life, like in the game of life, the matrix simulation, you can listen to your sun to do with purpose, career, and soul, father figures, fathers. You can listen to your moon, mother, mother figures, home, body, safety, and the mind, like your mind, body complex, uh, how you think about your life, how you feel about your life. All right. So Aries, sun, moon, and rising. Let's start it and talk about you. Am I recording? Yes, I am. We're looking at the story of a Venus in the heart of the sun, uh, death and rebirth experience on the fourth of the month of J June. Um, June 4th at 14 degrees of Gemini. Seriously, if you have a 14 degree sun, moon, or rising, this is game changing. We'll give it three degrees on either side of that 14 degrees. I have a 14 degree sun. It's game changing to sun, career and purpose, moon, body, and home, and rising. Everything that could possibly change in your life may change, but in a positive and flowing way because this Venus rise, this Venus uh, conjunction to the sun at 14 degrees of Gemini was indeed, sorry, what happened in here, was indeed flowing to this part of your chart, your airy sky. Now we also note that the rising is in the fourth house. And the rise is where you rise, where you become more successful, where you have some new illumination, some new light shining, right? Rising planets are visible. You become more visible, more shiny, and more bright in your fourth house. In general terms, the fourth house is what you do at home alone, your private home, domestic life, and your literal home where you live. That includes property, land, home, and real estate matters. This place of your sky, your fourth house, is becoming very bright for you. And it's going to be positively influencing you over the course of the next nine and a half months. This is where you can thrive, succeed. You can have love in the home, beauty in the home, kindness in the home. But you've also reset a button here and prosperity in and from the home and luck to do with home and real estate. But you're also resetting a button here. And that is to do with the third house, writing projects. Now, I kid you not, I got approached by an agent since the just as Venus is becoming visible to for, to write an astrology book, and I already plan to write the book called Deep Code Astrology. And this is not a small agent; this is a big publishing company output agent. It looks like anyway. I'm really happy to entertain that possibility with her. But I, I'm always I was always going to write the book this fall into the spring anyway. And one of the things I say is that writing projects communications projects are highlighted as a place of powerful rebirth for all of the Aries sun, moon, and rising sign folk. Third house matters can have a kind of a death and rebirth energy around a younger sibling, a death and rebirth of Venus around matters to do with learning and teaching projects, and also to do with your local environment, including your neighbors and neighborhood. And a lot of you may have a change of neighbors and neighborhood in the course of the next nine and a half months. And that wouldn't surprise me with Jupiter in your third house expanding your neighbors, neighborhood, everyday world. You may indeed be having something lucky, beneficial, and beautiful unfolding in the next nine and a half months that can look like a change of where you live, proximate to the everyday environment, like your home hood. But literally, what's going on in their home? And when I see Venus here rising at the last degree, and don't forget, she's about to go into that fifth house, you may find that this is about um, the beauty of your home. Because, you know, creativity in the home, art in the home, redecorating the home, or finding a beautiful new home. These are all quite possible. She's pregnant with possibility in the next nine and a half months regarding very beautiful and positive things in your home. Procyon, wealth and renown in the home. Procyon, executive daring capacity in and from your home. Whatever you're doing that's creative in your home, that's nurturing in your home, that's beautiful in your home, is going to bless you over the next nine and a half months. Sometimes it's literal. A female roommate, a woman living in the home with you, a sister living in your home, a female in the home, but not parent, right? Venus would be lover, romance, friend, female, home energies. Very, very important for you over the next nine and a half months. Now, it can be fertility in the home because she's a fertility goddess. And so conception, because then she moves into the house of pregnancy as well, or, you know, 
making babies, the fifth house, very shortly after this. And it's possible some of you may be making some babies uh, in your home <laughs> if you're at an age where baby making over the next nine and a half months makes sense to you as a man or a woman, because you both can make babies. So, or as a female or a male, whichever you want to call it, an egg bearer or a sperm bearer, just to be politically correct. And um, I think that her trying to Neptune, I mean, don't forget, she's already had the surprise of her contact with Uranus. Right, some kind of nice money surprise is is preceding her rise. Some kind of delightful financial surprise can precede her rise, but then she's going to go into that trine to Neptune, and Neptune is about your spiritual depth. You know, here in this anoretic degree of the house of full spiritual liberation. Some of you may be dreaming into it. I'm calling this the dream weaver rise of, of, of Venus because to me, she's rising as a dream weaver in her flow. What you desire being woven into visions and dreams and imaginations of Neptune. It's like the it's like the Empress in the tarot card is, is who she is. What does she want to give birth to in her imagination with this Neptune overlay? And so dreaming into being things that are also connected to foreign lands and foreign shores, even including a home in a foreign land or foreign shore, or extensive travel from home to foreign lands and foreign shores, or matters to do with um, revenue you may generate from far off in foreign places and doing that in and from your home or working on creative projects in your home and behind the scenes, okay? With visionary Neptune, it could be writing, music, photography, videography programs, movie making, screenplay writing, whatever you're doing. This is These two, 12 and four, are kind of cloistered houses where you're doing this in your privacy, in your bed pleasures, behind the scenes, you know? That kind of thing, all right? Or you may have a spiritual experience with a bed pleasure, like a, uh, you know... A tantric blowout or something because you know Neptune in the house of bed pleasures with Venus in the house of the home your in you know in home private sex life can take a new turn towards a more spiritual deepening or enlightening soulmatey vibe if you were a single Aries looking for love look for it close to home you know not far from home over the next nine and a half months and you get a goddess card. I have a feeling this video is going to be two hours long. I'm recording this for my Patreon community on July the 6th. And you're getting it on July the 7th. Because I'm on vacation, I'm not I'm not on my game. I almost forgot to do this video with Louise <laughs> in a timely manner. We had planned it. Okay. What goddess is speaking to you, Aries? Let me find a good place to fan the cards. Give me a minute, okay? I need a table next to me because I, I like to fan and draw. At, that doesn't fan on that table. Let me try. Let me try the dog mat. I mean, the cat mat down below. I'm coming back. So the goddess for you that wishes to work with you in the next, the goddess that's going to work with you. Oh, I love this. Airy sun, moon and rising is Mary for miracles. I'm not going to read this to you. It's Mary like, you know, you know who I mean, right? Mary. But to be honest, she was stuck to another card, which is a green Tara for salvation. Salvation doesn't surprise me because Neptune is in, is in the house of the ultimate Nirvana, Satori, salvation. Venus, of course, is like Mary, right? She's a goddess, a feminine energy. Mother Mary reminds me, Mother Mary, come to me. Words of wisdom, let it be, let it be, the, the Beatles. So Mary and green Tara, salvation and miracles are in order for you, Aries, sun, moon, and rising. Yay, yay us. Okay. Over the next nine and a half months, because that's how long she's gestating the next thing. And then she goes in next March into the heart of the sun and starts over in Aries. I apologize. We're actually looking at Taurus next. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. So how beautiful is this that you're going to experience as a Venus ruled being, right? Venus is the Lord of your sign. The rebirth of Venus happening has happened on June the 4th in your second house of finances, savings, money, resources, possessions, earnings, also of things you put in your mouth, like substances you eat, drink, smoke, and whatever, vape. That is good for you. Venus is a benefic. She also makes your face more beautiful, your teeth, good for facial rejuvenation. She died and was born again on the fourth of the month in your second house. 
Therefore, the indication is that you're going to be birthed something here. So if there's something you should not be eating or drinking that gives you pleasure, but isn't good for you, because her rebirth is also angular and was angular to the node of fate in your 12th house of addictions and also Chiron, you're likely to let go of some addiction. Goodbye, bad habit, addiction, self-undoing pattern and behavior. So good for that, but mostly things you put in your mouth that you shouldn't, time to stop. Now, you can beautify your face here. You may re re get your face redone, a nose job, a beautiful you know, veneers, or you might just have better facial improvements in the next nine and a half months, look more beautiful for some reason, better skin, who knows? But also she died here in the house of possessions and earnings. It could be a time for a really re big new beginning over the next nine and a half months and how you create financial wealth in your life, how you re resource yourself, where the money comes from. It could look like with Pluto up there in your 10th house, a new job. A new career path, a new money-making direction that does involve significant wealth and power. She rises and you, you rise, she becomes bright and visible. You become bright and visible in your third house. And what is your third house, guys? Your third house is the place where you are busy in your local environment. Your neighbors, your neighborhood, your friends, your everyday, you know, the grocery shopping, favorite, you know, spa, whatever you do in the local hood, that's a place of visibility and arriving to a le greater level of visibility. If you are a, a, somebody who's involved in brick and mortar businesses, like store shops and restaurants for your career or online world businesses, this is good. You're going to thrive, succeed, grow because of that in that area. Great for creativity and writing projects and communications projects as well. Uh, this is the house of the younger sibling, blessings from and with and rising power with your younger sibling. This is the one directly under you, ideally, just one below you. The third house can bring a greater um, power regarding short distance travels in the next nine and a half months or skills-based learning. A lot of you are likely to want to learn something, maybe professional, maybe just because you want to learn how to knit, but a new skill that you wish to learn. And this is like also usually learning a skill that you know, you know, it's not going to be a PhD, right? It's going to be a weekend workshop, a seminar, enrolling in short classes online or in real life. There will be some desire for study, okay, or learning something that you can tangibly use. Finally, um, Venus here rising at the anoretic degree is just about to slide, of course, shortly after into your fourth house where she will square Bacchus. So this is going to take me right back to the addiction story. If you've had any struggles with alcohol in particular, Venus will sort of cock, sorry, clock, I can't say that on this channel. She'll Bacchus block, right? She's going to come up against Bacchus from your Leo house and say in her entitled throne, no, thank you. No, no more. And you may engage Bacchus people, which can be, I mean, I don't know, significant others can help you disengage from alcohol or some kind of intoxicant that is overriding your better judgment. Finally, Venus at the anoretic degree can be a completion of a friendship, but in a positive way with a female from your childhood. Now, when I say completion, it could be a fulfillment. I, I know it doesn't have to be bad, but you know, it's an ending degree and it's in the house of friends that, from our childhood. And if there's some kind of childhood friendship that you just think, oh, okay, or younger life friendship, you just know it's not good for you. Maybe it's time to let it go. Some of you may. Anything else I'd say? Joy, pleasure, and fun to travel and enjoyment of things in your local environment are one of the themes of the next nine and a half months. Let's draw a goddess card for you. So we're going to ask for the Taurus sun, moon, and rising. Oh, you may have had a surprise, right? A personal shocking surprise or a personal turning point that just kind of surprised you, uh, but maybe delighted you as well, personally, um, an illumination and insight and aha, just shortly before this rise and the week before as Venus was in a, a more tight sextile to Uranus. What card do we get for you, Taurus sun, moon, and rising? That's the goddess that's guiding the next nine and a half months of Venus gestation of things, second and third house. Okay, it's called uh, the goddess Ain, A I N E, A I N E, A I N E. And it is the first card in the deck and it's adaptability. Now, I'm not going to read the book to you guys. Go get, you can go find this, but you are going to be highly adaptable as you progress through the narrative of the next nine and a half months regarding finances, resources, foods and addictions and letting go, things to do with local environment and success in writing, learning and travel. And adaptability is your key word. And 
And I'm just going to read this to you because adaptability is so vague, right? It says that when you've set your intentions on how your life could be different, better, fuller, juiciest, juicier, prosperous, creative, and more meaningful, adaptability is the power you need to rely on. Okay. As you uh, ask yourself, as you step into the unknown, who do I need to become in order to experience the life I desire? What a great message. Who do I need to become to experience the life I wish I, I, des I wish to desire? I desire. Perfect. Hope that's useful for you guys. Hey, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. I am certainly uh, vibing with that because I have a sun progressed here. And always listen for your primary positions of your natal chart progression secondarily. But you're going to see that this is a two-part story. Venus died and was reborn in the heart of the sun on the 4th of June at 14 degrees of Gemini. Do you have a sun, moon, or rising at 14 Gemini, three degrees before and after? You really felt the vibe of this. I need to re die and be born again. Yes, just like Jesus apparently did. Um, but, you know, it's really the resurrected king or queen in this case, archetype. Where is this resurrection of self? How are you ending and letting go of an old version of you to get divine mission instructions for a new version? This is the receptive, as Louise mentioned, receptive, uh, more passive, more yin version of Venus, the, the evening star, not the morning star, which is more yawn or aggressive. So you're re-inviting in, you're allowing, and you're surrendering into some reformation of identity, some shift of identity, some major rebirth and death of identity. Your character is changing. It's a ma major rewrite by the screenplay writer and the director about the character of your Gemini self. If this is your rising sign, everything I said is exactly what it is. If it's your moon, it's a resurrection and redefinition around your body or maybe home and home and home needs. And if it's your sun, it's certainly a resurrection and redefinition of your career and purpose. So keep that in mind, Geminis. Now, as Venus died here, then she decides she's visible and rising. So you are visible and rising in the sign of cancer. And at the end of cancer, it's actually at 29 degrees, but I'm just trying to advance the chart and not lose the picture. So it's happening at 29 cancer, as I said in the intro with Louise, this rising of Venus at 29 degrees is a very powerful, intense degree around earnings, money, possessions, resources, and things you put in your mouth. Having her rise in the house of things you ingest, because don't forget Taurus, it, she died there. So it's a complete hard stop, new beginning. This is different. This is like you are thriving. You are brighter. You are shinier and more beautiful because patiently, especially of something to do with pleasure and positivity in foods and substances you ingest. Okay. You can also look, uh, I'm quitting wine basically, I think until I figure out the middle way. So that would hit for me as a very true thing. But if you look at Venus rising in the second house, your earnings, resources, and possessions are also lit up. And over the next nine and a half months till the end of March next year, this is a place of positive development. So don't think it's just about your face or food style, which it can be, but it's also about your own speech, your voice, and your earnings and possessions and she flows to Neptune in that dreamy trine and that dreamy trine to Neptune is all about what you might wish to accomplish relative to your career path. It's almost like dream weave your career path into being. I hope I cover that for the Taurus. I don't even know if I did. I'm just going to go back and say, did I talk about Neptune? I might have forgotten. I did. Shoot. Hmm. I'll just say if you're listening through from the other side, you guys do Taurus is our dream weaving new visions and goals for your life and new groups of friendships and belonging. Okay. Back to the Gemini posit positivity here. Um, Venus will carry forward the energy of Neptune uh, over the next nine and a half months energetically. You're going back over some old ground in your career. You're looking at what's realistic. The tide is coming out. Go watch my Neptune retrograde. And as you see what's left on the shore that you want to work with, is it a conch shell? Is it a clam shell? Is it a piece? Of, is it a starfish? What's left there that you want to use in this career in a realistic and a sensible way uh, that has legs to stand on Saturn? And Venus is going to help you prosper from that. So as the tide pulls back, the dreamy goals that you had regarding career success and visions are also going to become much more realistic, but much more profitable. 
And anything you're doing to make money uh, also has support here from Procyon, which is wealth and renown, which is elements of daring executive capacity. So it's also, it's a very entrepreneurial star, just FYI, but energetically Procyon, the lesser serious, the smaller scar in the dog star uh, system is literally giving you blessings as well. And I'm going to draw a card for you and you're going to see what that looks like. If you're addicted to work, I think Bacchus is about addictions and she's going to bump into him, right? And also Kamea, but certainly Bacchus, you know, you're going to, you're going to bump into, you know, as she moves off of this place and we move her into Leo July 11th, you know, the month of the month of July into early August is going to be all about breaking free of things that, you know, have held you back because you're really overly doing it, maybe workaholism, maybe over intoxication with the work and the work energies and time to let it go. All right. So I'm going to draw a card now on the bottom of this thing. And I'm going to see what goddess is trying to help you guys in this career and resources energy, as well as a rebirth of your entire identity. Aphrodite, romantic love. <laughs> well, of course, Venus is Aphrodite, romantic love. Okay, so what are you going to fall in love with? It doesn't have to be a person. You can fall in love with a thing. You could fall in love with your work. You fall in love with an animal. You can fall in love with anything. If I look at this chart, I don't think you're falling in love with a person because Venus here, where she rises, is not witnessing this, the house of mating, right? Um, but if I look at the early words of the deck, just to see, you know, any ideas that come to me. Well, it basically says she's inviting you into a state of, she's, goddess is inviting you into a state of ecstatic being that you must cultivate from within. You could experience the world as sensual, creative, flowing. If you, uh, this means, uh, and what this might mean to you, it can be a new partnership or a deepening of the one you already have. Fall in love with your life now and choose to look for the essence and expression of love that is always, always around you, always, always around you. And love will increase tenfold. Okay. In your life. So I, as I said, right away, I felt like it was more like fall in love with life, fall in love with whatever it needs to be fallen in love with. And with Venus in your rising in your um, last degree, of your second house, she's very wise. It's really to me because she's activating the Artha houses, including this uh, whole sign relationship to Bacchus. What is it you need to rise into and brightly shine in that is work, career, and money and fall in love with it? If you're not in love with your work, career, and job, and money stories, this is what the sky is trying to do for you over the next nine and a half months. Let's see how that goes. Let me know. All right, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. Like story is here for you. What it is, is that Venus is going to, around the 10th of July, become visible in the late degrees of Cancer, 29 to be exact. And she's going to shine brightly as she does this, but she also died in the heart of the sun on June the 4th. And June the 4th is in your 12th house. This is a very spiritual place. So when she came to her uh, communion with King Soul in your 12th house at 14 degrees of your 12th house, she was getting another divine mission instruction as she's been doing every four years since the 60s to do with your spiritual path, to do with what you care about in your spiritual journey of understanding yourself, life, God, the meaning of life, etc. But on a practical note, she could portend in the next nine and a half months more money and generated from revenue from far off foreign shores, more new a new direction or re, new beginning to do with foreigners and foreign lands and foreign travel. These are all possibilities. It could involve a female as well, travel in the next nine and a half months to far off shores with a female or a sister, Venus rules sisterhood. Also cancer, she's in a, a back room house, you know, so things that are Venusian, bed pleasures, romance, sexuality, things that are Venusian, uh, things to do with like creative projects you do in your downtime by yourself are, are favored, but death and rebirth, meaning uh, you might have to end one to begin another. There might be a, a falling away of one thing for another to emerge. And as she rises, she rises to her bright, visible, you know, evening star, demure, receptive yin version of herself in the house of your identity. Now, for rising sign people, if you have your sun, moon, or rising sign, anywhere from about 26 to 29 degrees of the sign of cancer, certainly you're going to feel this more, most strongly 
because she's saying you are going to rise. You're going to be more visible, more successful, more beautiful, more popular. You're going to like yourself better. But it's your sun, it's all those regarding career, your moon regarding body and appearance, perhaps, or home and nest. And if it's a cancer ascendant, everything about your life is getting better and brighter, right? Career, relationship, home, because she shines her light from here to all over the chart, right? She's a flashlight shining through all of the other houses of your sky from the helm of the chart. Um, she's a beautiful flashlight. She's probably sparkling green and, and got gold flecks and a little bit of, you know, this and that. And she can light up any part of the chart that she wishes to observe. And most, most observable to her, of course, is home, nest, and real estate, significant love relationships and career, where she can get really easy angles on the view, as well as, you know, your ninth house and fifth house. So, uh, well, that's a whole deeper reading for a personal session with me, really. Um, Venus is rising and you are rising. She is visible and you are visible. That's the good news. She certainly can favor events to do with your 11th house, which is her home kingdom that she sextiles and greater gains from your career over the next couple of years is very possible. Well, certainly a couple of years over the next nine months from her rise. She's rising in that beautiful flow state to Neptune and Neptune is, you know, giving her that dreamy dream weaver vibe from the ninth house. This dreamy dream weaver vibe means you can weave into being ninth house matters. Do you want to go back to school and be educated in a formal setting? Do you wish to, or go to school for the first time? Do you wish to uh, be dream weaving something into being that has to do with God, spiritual philosophy, religion, book publishing, um, third marriages, things dream weave into being things, ninth house that have to do with uh, unbelievably fantastical dreamy outcomes with legal and court matters, visas and travel and foreign lands. All of this is very active. I see a lot of you with the Jupiter 12th and Neptune 9th, either going back to school, learning something, educating, or traveling abroad quite a bit in the next nine and a half months or, or possibly planning that travel. Now, Venus is activating in her heliacal rise a kind of a 159 energy in your chart. First of all, did you have any kind of surprises about and from an elder sibling, friend, ally, or benefactor in the week before this particular rise? That was just this, her sextile happy surprise to Saturn. But if not, the other energy is going to be now she's going to be flowing. You know, Bacchus is here. It's a whole sign. It's called a whole sign trine. And she will connect Bacchus by square. So Bacchus is like, what is it you're going to do here that brings you a state of ecstatic joy in your creativity, regarding your romantic life, regarding fertility, regarding uh, business entrepreneurial endeavors, and flows in such a way between one, five, and nine that the basic question and answer is, are you leading a meaningful life? Do you feel in alignment with a sense of joyful purpose? Because with Chiron, you've been trying to find the key to purpose. And Venus says, is it joyful? And in the next nine and a half months from the rise, you'll be answering and asking and answering that question in positive ways. I'm back down to the floor. I'm going to draw a goddess card for you. And the goddess card for you. And don't forget, I mean, you have a south node in your fourth house. Venus is squaring it as she rises by whole sign. A positive change of home and home environment for some of you cancers as well. Your card is Ellen of the Ways, and the key word is patterns, and it's the 12th card of the deck. So it's interesting patterns is involved here because she did die in the heart of the sun in the 12th house, which activates family of origin, ancestral line, and karmic patterns within your life. The things that you may have to let go of, south note in the fourth house that you learned or adapted about your life, you know, the way you live it from your childhood growing up and your family of origin narrative. And here we have the idea that she says, have you noticed patterns in your life that lead to positive experiences and developing positive habits can introduce you to new patterns in the fabric of reality that will support your dreams as they take form in the material world. It requires discipline, but you can do it in order to achieve new happiness. You know, it's interesting. 
I do think that's very apt because she died here. She flo she flowed to the south node. It's time to let go of old patterns, karmic and ancestral, and adopt new patterns in your life, Cancer, because those patterns will bring you a new sense of happiness and joy and meaning and creativity and fun in your life. Houses one, five, and nine. If you haven't hit my like button and you're in the live premiere, please give me a, a, a press with your finger. Nothing like a like button to help the algorithm like me. And then we all like each other. I'm going to keep on going. I'm on the next sign. I just need to take a kombucha sip. I promise you it's not wine. It is some kombucha. I have been wine free for nine days or something because I'm on a cleanse. My sister's doing a rife machine on me and it's called the terrain program protocol. I'll be doing a video with her to report on how that's influenced me, but I can feel it making shifts in me. And it's some, sometimes they're not comfortable. I feel like I'm in a detox, not for the wine, because I wasn't like drinking that much, but just from the, the, the rife machine itself or the spooky too, it's called. All right, back to the, back to business. Oh, how come I can't see the chart? There we go. Cancer, sun, moon, and rising sign. How amazing. Oh, we did you. <laughs> Sorry. Leo, Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. So how amazing it is to see Venus uh, dying in the heart of the sun in your 11th house back on June the 4th at 14 degrees and rising now on July 10th in your 12th house because it is really an interesting death and rebirth that happened in June because it flows to you in a sextile. So you're enjoying or receiving that evening, uh, the evening star death and rebirth energy. What it is, is that you're going to completely end a new beginning, have an ending and a new beginning regarding your friendship circles, groups of belonging and alliances. And by that, I mean, who are the people that you wish to socialize with in your larger networks? You may end certain groups of belonging. What are the long-term visions and goals you have for what you wish to achieve? That may be radically reforming with Venus saying, do you enjoy it? Or is it fun? Are you having a good time here? You also might consider that the way you make money Venus is blessing it. She's in her, she's in her celebrity status actually in the eleventh house. But you may be quitting or ending or letting go of something to do with the way you ended. You want to end and and rebegin the way you earn the money, the way the money from the tenth house is received by you. So it can indicate a change of career path. And certainly there were some surprises that she was in a relationship here to Uranus, an unexpected happy surprise may have occurred just shortly before she rose. And now you're moving into another story and your way you earn money and your career story might be shifting, Leos. You might get a new job all of a sudden, an offer for an interview, that kind of thing. Now, the other thing that I note here, it's, it's really critical, is that when she rises and she's receptive and yin, it's in a very invisible energy place. Well, she's becoming visible. She's becoming invisible in a house that's invisible to you. So you don't really see it as, as well as you'd like. You can't witness it. So it can be very deep soul work for you. You can energetically feel like you're doing karmic releasing or family of origin uh, divestiture or some kind of uh, inner work, inner process, and and alone, and in your alone time, we're alone in the cave, so to speak, when we're in that twelfth house place. And certainly, though, for the exception to the rule, would be anybody who wishes to maybe engage in a new educational path, or travel to far off foreign shores, or whatever, or makes revenues from far off places and shores. This can also indicate in the next nine and a half months, because that's how long this rising applies to the end of March next year. You may indeed me finding that to be a source of power, light, and goodness in your life, those areas I just described to you. It's really also a positive location to kind of rise out from the mire and the darkness and the difficulty of any addictions, self-undoing and bad habits, including just the basic, you know, cigarette, wine, whatever else you, you might have too much uh, dependency upon. Procyon, the star of wealth and renown, but also daring executive capacity, power, is the nature of Mars and Mercury, is allowing for those kinds of breakthroughs and those addictive substances, habits, and patterns that may have derailed you in a self-sabotaging manner. When she rises, she also does the following 
flow to Neptune. And don't forget, she's rising in your 12th house and she rules your 12, 10th house. So I just want to say one more thing. Some kind of new job opportunity can occur to you through kind of a backroom deals and negotiations in the next nine and a half months. More like, you know, secret deals and path and secret bargains are being made behind the scenes to elevate you to new career directions and success in the next nine and a half months. But that flow to Neptune speaks to me of an energy that's deep soul work, even with Bacchus, the god of wine, which can be about ecstatic consciousness, but also states of losing oneself to ecstatic states through addiction. A lot of Leos are really looking squarely at familial, ancestral, karmic patterns, and even psychological areas of their life regarding ways that they are, you know, missing the mark in their in their life. If you are spiritual, looking for God in all the right places, trying to find the meaning of life, of course, this can really support that journey. The houses of uh, 12, 4, and 8 are indeed a liberation, spiritual liberation energies. And so it can be unplugging from the illusion, the matrix, finding a new spiritual uh, attainment bestowed upon you for those of you who are barking up that tree. Um, the other thing I'd say is when she does move into Leo shortly after, right? Like right away after this week on the 11th of July, you could find that this 11th of July really does hit you in a way that, you know, she's opposite Pluto, right? You're going to make some major life changes when it comes to how you connect with your significant life mate, if you have one. Okay. There might be a turning point energy around July the 11th, 12th for some of you. And yet she's all powered up. She's becoming visible. She's been talking with that powerful star Procyon. So she's full of good juice and you've got all of that power and you're looking across at that business partner, client, significant other, and maybe making some major changes in that relationship. Hey, Virgo. Son. Oh, wait. I forgot to draw a card for Leo. I hope I drew a card for you cancers. <laughs> if I missed you as a sign, I don't normally draw cards. Sometimes I feel like it'd be fun. I apologize for anyone who somehow I miss and forget to do something with, but I did cancer. I think I did cancer because they had patterns. Yeah, so I did. So now what does Leo get in the goddess power oracle guidebook by Colette Baron reed I actually don't mind Colette Baron reeds books. Some of them are so super woo, but she's kind of down to earth a bit more than most of them I find anyway. I, I find that she really hits the mark. So it's two cards came out at once, so I can't pretend, right? I have to tell you the truth. Beauty, and that makes sense. Why does beauty make sense for you guys? Because Venus is about to rise she is rising and then she's moving into the house of your, your body, your appearance, your, your personhood. So this can indicate for a lot of you, you know, new haircut, new wardrobe, but at a deeper level, she's rising and then she's rising in the house of your identity. And therefore you may become more physically beautiful or accept that you are beautiful or, you know, beautify yourself. But she also is connected to the other chart card, forgiveness. And that makes so much sense because forgiveness, which is Bronwyn, is important. Um, the beauty card was the goddess Benzai Jen or Gen, looks Asian, I think, because, because when we look at houses 12, 4, and 8, we're talking betrayals, infidelities, we're talking family of origin, toxic secrets, we're looking at addictions that run in family lines, we're looking at self undoing and ha bad habits and patterns. And so, who are we forgiving over the next nine and a half months? And who are we beautifying? You're pretty beautifying you, but you may be forgiving those transgressions that you've encountered in those areas of your life, including yourself. Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sign. So first of all, Virgo, we want to talk about the death of Venus in the heart of the sun on June the 4th in your 10th house of career, the end of a visible reputation, career, public reputation status. Now, you know, public reputation, I'm married, I'm divorced. Um, I'm a student, I'm full-time employed. I say that my daughter is just going to look for real-time, full-time work now. She's been identified as a student all of her life. You know, she's finished university late at that, Saturn in her ninth house. Anyone here have Saturn in their ninth house? In the comments below, let me know. Delays in education, going back to school later, struggles to finish your degree, okay? She has that. So, I will say, how are you dying and being born again? Thank God for Jupiter, because it's going to be positive in your 10th house, in how people perceive you in various ways, 
your, your the public perception of you and your visible reputation is being reborn again. And your people will see you very differently by the time you get to next March, 2020 because this is a rebirth journey that takes that long to fulfill itself. But as you change your visible reputation in the eyes of the world, whether it's work, relationship status, the way people define your how you operate in the world and you define it as well, oh, there's you might, you know, so-and-so, they're married, they're divorced, they're a student, they're, they're head of the operations, now they're in like some other job. Now you're going to see a new direction. Because Venus is also rising to visibility and the gains from your career, your colleagues and coworkers. So there's going to be, if you're employed, then this is going to be enjoyment of the collegiate co coworker, coworker space, an increase in your financial well-being through the career path itself, a connection over the next nine and a half months to new friendships that are rising in your life as bright stars of ease and flow and fun. Also, a kind of a a light shining in the house of your longer range goals and wishes and dreams as you project forward what it is you truly desire. And as she says, what are you truly desiring? She flows to Neptune, the dream weaver, and you're weaving a new dream and what you desire in your long-term significant love relationship, your career and um, gains and friendship circles in your uh, connection to your audience and marketplace or your significant others. Those are your seventh house people. You may be dream weaving together. Now, Venus has a bit of celebrity sometimes in the 11th house, although Virgos tend not to seek it out. And with the Neptune trine, just saying some of you may become very well known, maybe a podcast, maybe a YouTube video, something like that. But for most Virgos who are of service, but not necessarily wanting to be you know, taking their bows on the stage, there's going to be a sense of you rising to greater visible success and likability anyway with Venus in the 11th. Venus is the ruler, of course, of your ninth house, and there's some significant power for her to flow backwards to Uranus. Just before you got to this particular rise, she did talk to happy surprises from the house of higher education, from the house of foreign shores and travel, from the house of legal matters or book publishing. So some of you Virgos may have had some happy surprises there, but it kind of bakes in an energy in the nine and a half months of good things happen to you in your ninth house as well. A lot of you may be looking as Virgo rising as Venus is going to also, she owns your second house with a South node. A lot of Virgos may be letting go of a food style of an, something, some kind of habit that of what they put in their mouth as well as, of course, uh, the way in which they resource their financial well-being. And Venus is definitely in her rise, um, going to square that by whole sign. So she's very pushy, but she's giving you better outcomes. She will slide into Leo, though, on July 11th, and then she will flow to the let go, eh? let go, let God, right? Uh, energy of the 12th house towards the south node. I mean, a lot of Virgos are looking squarely at what they need to let go of in self and doing self-sabotaging food styles, drinking, smoking, whatever it is. And a lot of Virgos are going to do that pretty well effortlessly once Venus rises in July 11th, add three weeks into your 12th house with good old Mercury, who is about understanding knowledge and, and, and mental clarity about why you would let go of something. You may actually study or learn something as well. Okay, anything else I want to say to you? Um, I would just note that Venus will hit a bit of a like a sharp, sticky spot as she moves July 11th, 12th, and she bumps into an opposition to Pluto. And even though that's another story, it'll be in my weekly, I just want you to be aware that it's a deep soul work crisis, right? Or 12, 6, to do with your health, your well-being, your addictions and self-sabotage. So 11th and 12th into the 13th of July, there's a lot of critical turning point energy regarding the themes I've just outlined for you. Now I'll draw a card for you. So let me just go down to the cat floor. <laughs> I'm coming back. Shuffle the cards again. And what do the Virgos need to know from the Goddess Power Oracle deck? Well, what you need to know is... All right, I drew the illusion card for you, number 35. Okay, what is the illusion? Now, don't forget when Neptune's not doing something Dreamweaver-like, and you're going back over some old ground in a significant relationship. You've been here before. 
If she's not dream weaving something positive in a fantastical, imaginal way, she's also looking at Neptune, the god of illusion and delusion and rose color glasses and the darker side of rose color glasses. So this card by Colette Baron reed describes illusion and what it might mean is this. Okay, so she basically says, if it's in shadow, it's, but where have you been in denial about your life? How have you been chasing after an outcome that eludes you? And do you want to believe in someone or something so badly that you've lost your weight and given your power away? Okay, so that's the dark side of illusion. You need some courage to see clearly. Neptune is rolling back the tide, allowing you to see what's true and real. But on the positive side, this is also a card that opens up other energies. And so it says that when you look at the world, everything you see appears to be real. And so you can easily imagine your current conditions are o influenced only by obvious actions and movements. But that's an illusion because everything is intrinsically interconnected though not visible to us. So then it says, asks you to do this. This calls to you to trust the invisible world is responding to your deepest desires and intentions to make a better life for yourself and for others. Oh my God, I love this. Um, seeing through illusions, the curtain of illusions, your clarity and intuition are heightened and your next steps are sure-footed. Everything you need arises from the world with ease. Okay. So keep that in mind. I wish you were the very best, you Virgo, sun, moon, and rising. I love there's a Virgo moon in the sky as she's beginning to rise, right? She's just about to step into the. So it, the moon's on your side, guys. It's a Virgo moon and it is the waxing crescent. So you are also starting to show the light uh, in the light of your own awareness. All right, how about Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising? Is this video three hours long? Okay, Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Venus died in the heart of the sun in your ninth house on June the 4th, rises in your 10th. Well, the house of meaning, of spiritual faith, of belonging, of pilgrimages, of things to do with far off foreign shores and lands, legal matters, books, and book publishing. Venus died in the ninth house, but Jupiter co present, which brings it blessings. So you're having a re death and rebirth of that area. I have a Libra rising friend who was on the El Camino with me. Her name is Renee, and she's writing a new book after the Camino. And that's all the death and rebirth of the ninth house for her, for example. But as well, we also see that as something is dying and being born again, and so many of you could lose your spiritual faith to find a new path, a new teacher, a new coach, a new guide, a new mentor. Uh, what else is the ninth house? The ninth house is clearly anything to do with publications and podcasts and book publishing, etc. My girlfriend publishes, my, Renee was publishing a podcast with another person and they ended the partnership, right? And so that podcast is coming to a close as far as I understand. Okay, I sorry, I had to put some drops in my very, very dry eye right now. And I would say to you, if you want to realize a, a spiritual new beginning, like a spiritual rebirth, forget about publishing and podcasts. The ninth is house is a house of God, Venus is benefic. And she says, well, let's birth into being something new in your spiritual awakening, awareness, and your trust in God, the divine surrender, all that good stuff. Now, Venus is coming into her heliacal rise in the evening star, yin soft receptive way in your 10th house of career clearly it means more career success in the nine and a half months more visibility you're becoming more visible in the career and reputation space more yin you're not working it you're not pushing it you're not grinding it's just flowing it's happening with ease pro scion uh, wealth and renown and executive daring capacity yay you and in essence you become more shiny bright and successful in your career all of you Libras, over the course of the next nine and a half months. As she rises here, don't forget, she came off of some happy financial surprise that may have occurred just before the rise and a few days before, but she's also rising in such a way that she's having you let go of an old identity, right? She owns the Libra sky and she's squaring it from the 10th house. So what part of the way you saw yourself, the way you thought you should be, do you have to release and let go of? Okay, so keep that in mind too. But she does flow to Neptune. That was the most exciting dream weaver part of this. And the dream weaver, what do you desire in your career and reputation that brings you joy, happiness, and success, and even prosperity that flows to the work environment itself? You know, Neptune here is like, are you trying to create a dream work environment? Like maybe 
as the tide rolls back and you're able to see what was illusory here, you realize you really don't like working in a desk under a fluorescent light after all, or you really don't like working home alone all the time and you feel isolated. What is the actual work environment that you have? Anything to do with work environments and career spaces are shifting. And these are houses 10, six, and there's Bacchus in the second house. You know, second house is the savings and earnings and finances. So it looks like you may have had an ecstatic state, maybe to the detriment of you that's going to heal regarding money, work, and career matters. Either which way, you're rising. You're rising in visible status in your career space. And there's nothing to worry about. In essence, it's really, really positive. And, you know, the Daughters of the American Revolution was in on that degree of Venus. So maybe you're going to have a revolution in how that visible career status looks for you and the world. Also, I kind of would say, you know, she was born again in your ninth house. And if you never have had a spiritual guide, teacher, mentor, life coach, or something like that, that's Jupiter's role, like the hand of the king up there, but also greater expansion when it comes to the word international. So, you know, whatever you're doing could have an international energy of new beginnings for you, international company you work for, an international success in a podcast or book publishing endeavor, because as she rises into the 10th house, she brings visibility to the things you've been doing relative to your ninth house. I'm going to draw a card for you, but I will give you a little heads up not to watch my Monday video that comes out the day after this. Um, she's going to come into that opposition to Pluto, and that's just going to be one bit of grind that you're going to bump into around the 12th or so of this month. And that grind can look like, a, a, like I don't know, a love, a toxic love story um, to because Pluto is in the house of romantic love and a betrayal or a real... Mm, even a friend, even a friend or larger friendship circle group, uh, grit, grit and betrayal or power struggles as well, especially power struggles with females. It could be colleague, coworkers, it could be friendship, anything like that. Let's take a card for you uh, and see what we get. Give me a sack, give me a sack. Uh -huh. And it is, the card for you, Libra is, oh my goodness, come on out. Persephone, the goddess who got abducted into the underworld, just as if I'm talking about Venus opposite Pluto in the fifth house of romantic love, entrepreneurship, and creativity, and Venus coming on July 11th, 12th, 13th into your 11th house. Hmm. But we're really talking about Venus rising, right? So Persephone is the queen of the underworld. She's very strong. She wasn't just some kind of victim, right? In fact, I always look at Persephone as how we can take the victimhood out of our life and become the victor because she turned a really bad situation into something extremely positive, although her mother did rescue her. It's a long story. But let's go to 43, just to make sure I don't miss any keywords. I mean, because this one's a little bit more vague, you know, Pluto is definitely uh, a story and Venus to do with that narrative. Um, 35, 35, 35. But we're talking about nine and a half months of goodness in your 10th house. So let's see what else this might mean. No, I'm not 35. Sorry, 43. Persephone, 43. Oh, give me a second, guys. Here we go. So it's really the card, it's called the card of an experience in this deck. So she's protecting you so you don't fall prey to um, unconscious commitments and dangerous alliances. Because she was naive and she got abducted by Pluto into the underworld. Okay. And she struck a terrible deal with the god of the underworld. And... It really says, uh, stop and pay attention to any red flags. Don't eat the forbidden fruit. Now, hey, well, this is really when Venus is rising into your 11th house, the only forbidden fruit or innocence and naivety, naivety to watch for is coming from the house of social groups of belonging, friends, and career gains. So just keep that in mind. Like maybe the, it would be... Um, the dream weaver energy is shadow would be the illusion of something positive financially in the work and career space. So keep your uh, eye on realism, ask for advice from other, another person. 
um, et cetera. But she was the queen of the underworld. The queen of the underworld is a powerful storyline. And you could be the queen of something in your kingdom of your 10th house of career. But some of that may come through moments in which you feel like someone yanked you into the underworld. And so keep your eye on that story. Um, Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign Venus died in the heart of the sun, June 4th, and she died in the heart of the sun in Gemini. Gemini happens to be your chunky, I call it chunky money, unearned income. I always say, people say, what do you mean chunky money? But then I explain it to you guys every time. Un unearned income, mortgages and bank loans and stock investments, money you share with other people, other people's money, other people's resources, business partner resources, significant long-term committed marriage, like love resources, you share the money, that kind of money. So Death and rebirth, Scorpios, in the eighth house of other people's money, including inheritances. Jupiter's here. This is an inheritance transit. Venus dies here and births herself anew. It's possible between June the 4th and next March, you will inherit money from your family of origin, especially with Pluto in your fourth house. But without a money inheritances, there's some big changes coming but Jupiter there, they should be positive in your finances with your marriage partner and in your inheritance money and in your mortgage money and your real estate property money and money you get in tax rebates, chunks of money and that don't belong to you because we government shares the money we make, <laughs> right? Stock investings are you're investing in a company and you're sharing the resources with them and you make money off of that, like, a, you know, dividends and stuff. So possibly that's going to mean a major change in that area of your life with Jupiter is positive. And that plays out until the end of March next year, Scorpio. As well, royalty income and other income, like the book publisher gives you a percentage of their money on selling your book. That can look very good on you as well over the next nine and a half months of gestation. Venus is also looking at the story of rising to visible status, bright and shiny and new, evening yin and soft and receptive in your ninth house of book publishing. That's good for you Scorpios who've got a book. I know everyone doesn't. Your ninth house of your third marriage and the resources you share are being blessed over the course of the next few years. Sharing money with your spouse and rising in legal matters can look like separating assets and rising and what the judge declares is positive and you get most of the money or your fair share. But Venus is also rising in the house of meaning. What is the meaning and purpose of your life? Do you feel in alignment with life itself? Because one quests for meaning dharmic alignment in the ninth house and you're really focused on that question venus is in a dharma house uh bacchus is in a dharma house and of course so is neptune the dream weaver what about that dream weaver he's weaving a dream of joy incitement excitement fun play enthusiasm pleasure creativity artistry um, entrepreneurial directions and fertility, pregnancy, romance, and love. So if you're a single Scorpio, romantic love from far off foreign shores. If you're with somebody, romantic love flourishing through adventures to far off foreign lands and shores and dream weaving something new into being. If you are an artist or creative international success through an artistic creative and project or an endeavor entrepreneurially, you're weaving some dreams into your fifth house, which is a very much in Indian astrology, a manifestation house. Like if the Lord of the first house is in the fifth, you've got more wish fulfillment power than most. So energetically, you may be trying to create a whole new dream in your life about meaningful, the meaning of life. You guys are kind of dealing with sort of a dissatisfaction and since 2019 in the workhouse and you may be feeling like you're off purpose and you struggle to find meaning and purpose in your work and that's going to continue to be true uh, but the eclipses are trying to generate a new current here to get you out of that suck hole um, so keep that in mind but you know next couple of years you're still finishing up that wound but i would say like look at scorpio is your scorpio sun moon or rising anywhere from 27 to 29 degrees then clearly you're going to be moving in alignment with new purpose and meaning all scorpios will feel the blessings of this nonetheless finally grandchildren and children are fifth house ninth house and so adults children could get pregnant and you could dream weave with a significant relationship partner. You're pregnant or birthing a baby, gestating a baby. What was the happy surprise that Venus delivered with Uranus um, Venus stuff going on just before this? What was the happy surprise before the heliacal rise in the few days that preceded it? Did your partner say they're pregnant? Did your child tell you they're pregnant? Did you have a, a happy surprise regarding a business alliance? Let, it, let me know in the comments because this will fulfill itself more fully in the next nine and a half months. Like this could be a creative project surprise as well. Like, you're, you know, if someone wants to buy your manuscript, pick up your song and, and put it on the bill, billboard or something. 
All right, so that's about that. I hope that's useful. Let's pick a card for Scorpio. And I'm gonna have to take a break, guys, and come back. But no, you won't know I'm gone. You won't even know that I left the room. Hang on. Okay. All right, you have two cards. Um, they came out together. Mott, truth. That's the goddess of balancing the scales of justice. Light as a feather, go to heaven. And Hera. Now, Hera is the wife of Jupiter. So we see a lot of energy here in the house of significant love relationships. And Hera was the wife of the god, king of Mount Olympus. A lot of Scorpios are dealing with, uh, going to deal in the next nine and a half months, nine and a half months with issues to do with significant long-term relationships, perhaps, right? Hera, Juno, is activated here for you. I wonder as well, I'm going to see what the card actually says in the book because it was the first card I drew. The second one was balancing the scales of justice, Mott. Okay. Now Mott connects to energies like the justice card in the tarot. If you know your tarot cards, I cannot find the book. Where did the book go? This is not good. Okay. The other book was just, oh, there it is. Let me just check out what this author, Colette Baron reed says on 20, card number 21. Just a gist of it. Um, she, because Venus is you know, activated here. And she wants you to know about Hera. Funny that the justice card is here as well. And that's a Libra, scales of justice connected to Mott. And of course, Libra is your 12th house. And that's your spiritual uh, revelation, understanding, and releasing of family karma as well as it flows to this Pluto. All right, here we go. Okay. Wife of Zeus knew intimately that positive alliances led to great power because the key word is alliance. At this moment, you're magnetized to receive help from people who have given wisdom and can help you to the next level. And perhaps it's a mentor. Well, ninth house is mentorship. Not, perhaps it's a mentor who appears or someone in the know. Making connections with others, finding strategic partnerships are favored as you explore the nature of being empowered by association. Okay, so there's a sense of wanting to ally with significant others, whether it's your marriage partner or the up, uh, the guides and mentors, et cetera, up at the top of the sky. As for the scales of justice, Mott, I'm going to go with the Libra part of your sky on that because Venus is, it's her house as she rises. And the ninth house is also connected to court. So if I see a little inheritance money here, there's going to be all kinds of things in the next nine and a half months that have to do with the scales of justice, fairness, and court matters and legal matters regarding shared resources with other people. Venus is assuring you that you do well in all of that and protecting you. Now, quick pause. If you're watching the live premiere, have you hit the like button? Have you subscribed? Have you shared this video with somebody? Have you done any of that homework that I'm asking you to do? All right. So I am dealing up a really bad haircut and I'm not really, the haircut's fine, but bad shampoos and on the road, no, 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 no real product with me. So bear with my hair. I know you're going to say my hair is fine, but to me, it looks weird. Um, anything else I want to say, don't forget all my videos are for sale right now. Go, go grab them. Uh, 90 minutes each, 12 videos, mere price of $33. I think about 12 divided by 33 um, when you can listen for sun, moon, and rising, plus share with friends and family. There's still six months left in the year. So you still get a lot of value. This is less than half price. The full price is $77. And it's less than what people paid in the pre-sale price of $49 and $59 early in last fall and early in the year. Okay, let's get rolling. The next story. The next story is going to be the sign of, I think it's Sagittarius. Yeah. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising. What's going on? You are going to note that you're having the experience of a death of, of Venus in the sign of Gemini. And Gemini happens to be your significant marriage type relationship partnerships, as well as business audience and marketplace 10th from your 10th house. That's why when you see Jupiter here, things are blessed, but they can also represent blessed endings. I have to tell you that. And at the same time, Sagittarius, now we have a Venus story emerging. Death of one relationship, beginning of another one in the next nine and a half months to four years is possible for some of you, but it has Venus's blessings. Second of all, if you're single, Sag, you might meet somebody, somebody new in the next nine and a half months, 
as Venus has died and ended something to begin something new in the relationship house. It's also legal contracts and legal contracts and agreements can be highly important to you, especially regarding shared resources with a business partner or a significant other. Because when Venus ro rises on July the 10th, she rises in your eighth house and your eighth house is the shared resources with a business partner or spouse, bank loans and mortgages, investments. This is an area of positivity for you, more visibility here, more light, more risingness in your eighth house of that kind of money. But if there have been secrets at all involved in any part of your life, especially regarding significant love stories, those secrets are going to be vis visible because Venus is becoming visible and hidden stories to do with sexual love and romantic love will be brought forth, especially because you're dealing with a chironic wound in your house of romance. This is a rising square, the note of fate in your fifth house. And some of you will be dealing with romantic secret re revelations as the light of Venus is here, but there is a powerful star procyon as well, but it is the nature of Mercury and Mars, which is maybe difficult information or news. You could fall in love with somebody and have a secret love affair over the next nine and a half months as well. The dream weaver energy that Venus is hooking up to though is Neptune in your fourth house. Now you may have had a surprise that preceded this to do with pets, work, uh, health, okay, karmic relationships just before the rise on the 10th of the month, a few days before. But what Venus also, it should be a happy surprise, but Venus is ultimately flowing to Neptune and what visions, dreams, and uh, and outcomes are you trying to weave into your life regarding your home, the beautiful home, the dreamy home, the sacred temple home, the enlightenment home, and with Saturn, the, the, the forever home, the lasting home, the, the solid home. You've been maybe alone and lonely, anxious and afraid or something with that Saturn here since last year. Venus is flowing to that Saturn as well. So ultimately trying to take some of the edge off of some hardships in the home. And as Venus is also powerfully anoretic and potent, uh, et cetera, she definitely has her strength here. And she could be saying, as a daughters of the revolution symbol here, what revolutions are you going to make regarding your home and your jointly held finances with another, your mortgage, your payments, your save, your investments, your you know monies? There's big changes to do with home and money matters for you guys. Now, certainly um, in the next nine and a half months, some of you can get some positive money developments connected to real estate for sure with the Venus flow to the fourth house. Venus is a ruler, by the way, of your sixth house of work and pets and good things can happen to them and for them as well. You might get a new job, you might get a new pet in the next, you know, nine and a half months. Uh, Venus wants you to, of course, as she witnesses in your 11th house and squares it by whole sign house, wants you to let go of and release and surrender some of the dreams and goals you've had for your life. Some of the friendships and friendship groups that you have been belonging to may no longer be right for you at all. I'm going to draw a card for you, Sagittarius. And one more thing I'd say here, if there's any chance that um, Venus exalts your fourth house of legacy wealth from your family of origin, as well as she exalts your fourth house of home. And so whatever she's trying to do in a very financial house, basically, can be extremely positive for wealth matters generated from things to do with rental properties, owning property, buying property, selling property over the course of the next nine and a half months. And the goddess card for you is divine wisdom, Sophia. I love that because she's going to move on the 11th, 12th, 13th into your ninth house of God. And divine wisdom is up in that ninth house, but she's the goddess. So it's, it's divine Sophia wisdom, gnosis, knowing, not just knowledge and learning. And as she crosses over that threshold around the 12th, 13th, you know, 11th, 12th, 13th, she will have a scrape with Pluto. Uh, scrap with Pluto in your third house. And so there can be some crunchy uh, stories in regarding travel or legal matters or, tr or learning situations this week. But Sophia is opening up a door of divine wisdom. And Sophia's divine wisdom <laughs> will say this to you, card number 48 by Colette Baron reed Human wisdom comes from personal experience, but divine wisdom is unknown to us in our life experience. When we asked for help, we were asking from source greater than us, the great and noble mystery. 
And when we receive this help, it's often life altering and it affects us in ways beyond our comprehension. And so basically, this energy arrived to show you how fate and destiny operate in relationship to synchronicity. And when you least expect it, opportunities and meetings will spring up out of nowhere and your life will work out. Trust you are divinely protected and guided in alignment with higher power and purpose. Basically, it's asking you to lean into the, the divine wisdom as opposed to your personal knowledge. Uh, as you look at this, it can be divine wisdom also regarding matters to do with houses 8, 12, and 4 where Bacchus is in your 12th house of ecstatic revelry, the Bacchanalia. Um, this can be about a dear, deep, deeper, deeper level of spiritual attainment for any Sagittarius is wishing for an awakening energy in the next nine and a half months. Capricorn. Sun, moon, and rising sign. Venus rising. First of all, Venus dying in the heart of the sun on June the 4th in your uh, sixth house is important. It is an end and a beginning. So an end of one way of working in the world and achieving success in career and purpose and a beginning of another. An end of it, one pet relationship, a beginning of another. An end of one rental situation, a beginning of another. An end of one debt situation and beginning of another, like end of debt and rise up from it. Because you rise up in the house of significant long-term committed love. There can be a very powerful energy that fuels your significant other to great success, pro, 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 pro scion, wealth and renown for the one you're with, but also influencing beneficial outcomes for you, of course. However, just generally speaking, the house of long-term committed love is getting a bright rising and therefore you are going to rise in that area. Single Capricorns may begin new relationships and, and one's engaged in love can find an increase of the joy and fun and beauty of that love relationship. As well, what about the idea here that Venus is rising in a trine relation? Well, first of all, there may be even a surprise. Like look to like three or four days before the rise, Uranus and Venus were like, surprise, happy surprise with your children. With the moon in the ninth, one of your children tells you they're pregnant. Happy surprise with, or their you know, partner's pregnant. Happy surprises regarding creativity. Happy surprises around money luck. All of these stories are emerging just before her rise. Money luck, perhaps, with a significant other as well. She, there's a dream weaver flow to Neptune, and Neptune is in your third house. And your third house is about travel siblings, younger, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews, stories to do with communications, emails, phone calls, text messages, things to do with your local neighborhood and neighbors. Okay, so all of that is in play. And there may be some kind of dream weaving into being with a significant other business or love, a new direction in your creativity uh, online, this is online, or in your travel or in your neighborhood and neighbor stories. Don't forget, she died in the heart of the sun in the sixth house as well. And that can be about rental property. Some of you may be changing where you live if you rent a property, okay? Or as a landlord, you rent out a property. You could find here that the dream weaving, it can open up doors of creativity around communications and writing projects just for some of you who are inclined to write and you will grind at it for sure. I mean, it's hot in here with Saturn in your third house. If you're going to meet somebody new, you could dream weave this into being through an educational setting in the next nine and a half months or a travel opportunity. Neptune is retrograde. And so some of the dream weaving is nothing new. You've been here before. You've traveled here before. You've learned in this environment before. And so again, things from the past bring love into the foreground, but also you may re-envision a love from the past into a new form. Like, because this is strengthening long-term committed love for you guys. It really is. And so that can really open up doors of greater commitment in long-term love stories or greater joy in those long-term love stories. But also your main squeeze, whoever that is, may be thriving in the nine and a half months that follow, just because it's the house of that significant other. You know, Venus does um, own the property or the real estate of your 10th house. And the self note has been asking you to let go, let God since last year middle of July through to the end of this year, you know, you're having to surrender, release, and let go of an old reputation career path. But 
But opportunities from your past can emerge as well. Venus is quite capable if she moves into Leo, July 11th at three weeks. So bringing you opportunities uh, for career success, she's becoming visible from places you and people from your past in the matters of career and reputation. Alrighty, I'm going to draw a card for you guys. Let's put the uh, good old divine wisdom back in. Maybe somebody else will get it, right? And what do you get? Oh, I just shuffled it back in there. Well, pretty close. You got Athena, the goddess of knowledge. Ha, I always think of Athena as a, as like a lawyer, and she's also associated my practice with, with authors. Um, let's take a look at that, Athena, the goddess of knowledge, number five. Because this is relative to where Venus is rising, the house of authorship. That She's about authorship lawyers, uh, knowledge and wisdom, strategy and victory. Now, again, it, because she's rising Venus, it could be your partner's having authorship, strategy, victory, knowledge, you know, et cetera. But you get some of it too, because it's going to land right back at you, what your partner knows or what your new partner knows, you will know as well. Knowledge, Athena, card number five, she says, Athena, the Greek goddess of intellect strategy says, knowledge is power and you are the perfect position to gain greater clarity at this time. Your hard work is paying off and everything you have learned about this has brought you into this moment about life has brought you to this moment. Your knowledge, logical choices, intellect, and intentions are aligned with the divine will. You know what you have to do right now. The world is making sense. You don't have to question or debate it. Okay. You can take things at face value. All right. So only thing I'm going to say, it can be that this is more about someone else in your life who has these qualities for them. Just know that because anytime I look at seventh house actions, I'm really thinking it's not about you. It's about this. This is the I thou. Who is the thou? Who's the other person for whom this is happening? How does it impact you? It impacts you perhaps in matters to do with, you know, other houses, but their story is flowing to your story. Uh including a possible dreamy change of neighborhood with a significant other, right? That kind of thing. Or dreamy change of residential environment if it's a rental with your significant other over the course of the next few years. Oh, I mean months until March of March of this year. Oh my goodness. This is a long video. Let's keep going. Oh my God. What time did I start this thing? Alrighty. Let's go uh, um, Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Venus uh, died in the heart of the sun in your fifth house, the house of your children, the house of your creativity, uh, the house of your entrepreneurial endeavors. Big changes there. I have Aquarius sun uh, rising. I can relate. Big changes, death and rebirth, but Venus is blessing it. Jupiter was co-present for the death and rebirth. So this is a very powerful place where you're going to be rejuvenated. More innocence, wonder, play, joy, enthusiasm, and pleasure in a positive way, more joy in your life over the next nine and a half months. But something's dying for that to occur. So you may quit a pleasure or something, or you may have some kind of renewal regarding your relationship to your sexuality and romance, death and rebirth. You may also have a renewal and a death and rebirth around children and the relationship to them. And certainly Jupiter here could indicate a pregnancy and fertility energies with Venus for you. If you're young enough as a man or woman to have a child or your significant children, they may be getting pregnant in the next year with child. That said, if you are an artist or creative, Jupiter Venus energy is at the death and rebirth. It's the beginning of a new project, a, a, a generative energy of a seed being planted around creative projects. And certainly given the flow to the North Node, it's likely to be communicating writing projects for sure or teaching projects. Now, Aquarius, what about the fact that Venus as she rises is rising in your sixth house? Well, it's a blessing in the next nine and a half months for your health and improvement in your health and alleviation of illnesses and improvements regarding pets. Honestly, I think some of you might get a pet in the next nine and a half months. It's also positivity around elimination of debt, legal, financial and karmic. It's also positivity and beautiful energy that flows back in surprising ways to home and domicile. And also, of course, that moon is up there. So abilities to buy a home, sell a home, rent a home, new home stories can emerge in nine and a half months. With Jupiter and Venus here together at the reset button of the June 4th, lotteries, gaming, winning money is in the story. Um, with Venus rising in the sixth house, work 
workplace, workspace, career space, enjoyment. Houses, um, she flows through the Dreamweaver Neptune. What dreams do you want to weave in your financial resources and earnings and savings connected to your work, connected to ecstatic revelry with your career? You're actually looking a lot of Aquarians at new flow between career work and money stories. However, also Neptune dream weaving in the house of things you ingest, including addictive substances, because that's what Saturn rules for health is health of self and doing and flowing to better health. I'll speak to that. I'm on a wine cleanse right now, no alcohol for eight days. I'm my, looking at a lot of the alcohol-free uh, free lifestyle literature, videos. And the more I listen to that stuff, and I've been here before, guys, so I'm really, you know, alcohol is a to toxic poison. Any more than two drinks a week is like a death sentence, basically, and a health, a health uh, detriment. And I'm looking at just giving up that worldly pleasure, you know? And that's the death and rebirth of Venus in a house of pleasures, but also Jupiter, the god of joy, is there. I wrote a poem about this, you know, that um, you know, my pleasures will not keep me forever from my joy. And anyway, it was a story about a guy waking up hungover from a party like a decade ago. At that poem, and but it's a deeper thing. It's about we look for pleasure to substitute for authentic, causeless joy and happiness. And happiness is inside job, right? Nothing outside of us brings it lecture, lecture. So some of us Aquarians are finally learning the lesson because we are Pluto powered. We're running on titanic uh, evolutionary forces of divine will, and we're no longer in charge. If you ever had as an Aquarius to quit a bad habit, substance or pattern, Pluto will help you do it. Now, I do want to note here, there's no way you're getting away from some radical change regarding your home situation with Mars Uranus co-joining here, right? So just be aware on July 15th, that doesn't mean it's on July 15th, but over the course of the, uh, you know, the months that follow, you'll find some big shift in where you live. Most of you will. Okay. So there is that energy that Venus is complicit with from the house of rentals. Um, but also with that moon at the time of her, of her rise in the house of shared resources with a partner, mortgage banks and loans, this can also look like an opportunity for selling or buying real estate uh, in the next nine and a half months. And what I wonder what card the universe has for you. Let's take a look. Let me put Athena back in just in case some of our Aquarians out there get an Athena storyline, goddess of knowledge. What do you get from this guy? <laughs> you get Aphrodite. You're the second person. Why well, do you get the Aphrodite story? Peach Pit has a great Aphrodite song. You know that? Go, go Google Peach Pit, Af Mighty Af Aphrodite. Um, that's a band, Peach Pit, Mighty Aphrodite. So, okay, let's go there to goddess of love. What are you going to fall in love with in your life? Who are you going to fall in love with in your life? Is it a pet? Very likely. Is it a new work environment? Very likely. Is it um, a situation that connects you to a greater enjoyment of the work you're doing, your health? You're falling in love with yourself because you're taking care of your health. Um, you're falling in love with your career because of the whole sign flow to Bacchus in the 10th house. And once Venus goes into the seventh house, July 11th, 12th, and 13th, other than maybe a blowout with a business partner, client, or significant other jaw, 11th, 12th, 13th, it could be a gritty power struggle there. The bottom line is as Venus moves into her rise further into Leo, the next story is about the flow energy to the node of fate. And that could indicate some increase of success regarding legal contracts, writing projects, uh, audience marketplace outreach. If you're like me, an online person, when Venus moves to my moves to my seventh house last summer, my channel took off. So Venus in the seventh house for people who promote something, share something with an audience marketplace client base. You know that's your job. Then this is going to love you up, and you're going to have a really nice flood of success in that area. Uh, July 11th, add three weeks. But at the longer story, as she rises into your seventh house and she connects more deeply to the nodes of fate in a positive way, and we'll cover that in the Leo and Venus video coming out later this week, it looks to me like one of the things that involves here for you is moving into a new relationship, right? To work and soul. A girlfriend, a woman I met years ago wrote a book called Why? Because this is the house of work where the sun is, Venus will rise into Leo. Bring Your Soul to Work. That was a book she wrote, Tannis Halliwell. I don't know if it's still in print. She's Canadian. Bring Your Soul to Work. That's what the universe is asking you to do. So bring your soul to work. Okay. And um, so fall in love with life again. Fall in love with yourself. Don't forget the death and rebirth reset was in the house of joy. And Venus is there, but Jupiter's there in 
as well. Venus is in the house of her joy in the fifth house. Authentic joy, enjoyment, pleasure, fun, and play. Okay, is the call of the sky for your next nine and a half months, Aquarius. And last but not least, best but always best, the mystic poets of the zodiac. You adaptable, flexible, mutable Pisces souls with the two fishes going in different directions. What shall you choose? Venus dying in the heart of the sun. Oh my God, home and property and real estate. June the 4th, my Pisces rising sister sold her house and her husband and her moved to a new one. It's very literal. However, Venus promises a death of a home and a rebirth of a home anytime between June 4th and next March, but also ending ancestral patterns, ending matters to do with your karma and ancestral wounds as a child. Also Jupiter, legacy wealth, inheritances, monies, money from your family of origin may be coming to you in the next nine and a half months to help you rebirth. Venus rising, coming into a place of her joy, in the house of her joy. Why is that important? You're going to become more visibly joyful, more visibly inspired and enthusiastic, more visibly creative and procreative. Are you a fertile egg-bearing female? You may be pregnant. Are you a sperm-carrying male? You may impregnate somebody in the next nine and a half months, Pisces. However, Venus rises to visibility in the house of creativity and artistic endeavors and entrepreneurial businesses, and that's going to be an area of thrival over the next uh, over the next nine months, nine and a half, till the end of March. Don't forget, she's in her joy in Hellenistic astrology here, right? So for Aquarian, she died in the house of her joy, but for you guys, she's rising in the house of her joy. And she's rising in the house of her joy, flowing to Dreamweaver Neptune. You are weaving the dreams. You have the magic wand. You have the visual imagination to do it. You are operating like the seven of cups on steroids in the tarot. And you know, Saturn says your dreams are realistic, sober-minded, and practical. And Neptune gives you the visionary ability. He's retrograde. Some of these dreams are old dreams. You want to rejuvenate them in the house of children, you know, like childlike wonder as you dream into being something that you really want in your life. What do you desire? What do you want? And Venus is going to give it to you, but in a way that brings authentic pleasure, joy, creativity, inspiration, and enthusiasm. Certainly really good for artistic projects and um, and certainly really good for entrepreneurial endeavors and certainly wonderful for your own children and the relationship you have to them, but also they are getting significant blessings from this rise and your children in any kind of distress or hardship will begin to also alleviate from that hardship, as, especially your firstborn child, but all your children as this rising takes place over the course of the next, over the course of the next nine and a half months. Your second child um, in your life as well gets a significant blessing, your second born child as well. So just because of where the moon is sitting in the chart. Uh, you know, Venus here, she also is a real estate owner of your third house where you may have had a disruption or surprise thanks to uh, Uranus. Well, first of all, a happy surprise just before her rise, right? And a few days before her visibility, just a few days before July 10th. What is a happy surprise that's showing up for you? I mean, maybe a day before, but what about, or two days before, but what about Mars here? You know, I'm just saying, you know, big changes are coming, you know, it's July 15th at about three or four or five months. You should know that there's a big change regarding travel, siblings, things to do with your local neighborhood. That's where that Uranus conjunction is. And I only bring it up because Venus was busy hobnobbing with Uranus. And so there's a kind of a Venusian flow back to this difficult sky <laughs> of change, but also surprising. And all surprises are not negative. I mean, you may be changing your relationship to your neighbors, your neighborhood, travel opportunities, et cetera. And, you know, keep that in mind. Um, what I also want to note is Venus has been asking you to let go of your, you know, old ways of securing financial uh, um, stability through, I don't know, grants, relying on credit card money, relying on your partner's money. That's just let go now, let go, let go especially if she moves into Leo in the first, you know, July 11th had three weeks, but she also is opening up a gateway as she moves into Leo July 11th to flow back to the North. No, just as she's rising, which is to say it's time to start to create resources and savings and increase for yourself, which has been a wounded place, this earning savings and resources since 2019. 
Venus is trying to rise and soothe that. But if you're going to do that, be entrepreneurial, be creative, be joyful in the kind of work you wish to do in order to increase your own financial well-being. Finally, houses one, five, and nine, where we can see all of the Neptune Dreamweaver and the Bacchus energy of ecstatic revelry are Dharma houses, meaning that a lot of what she's trying to accomplish in ter terms of bringing you more fun, joy, play, pleasure, enthusiasm, wonder, and childlike innocence, return of innocence, is she's trying to also tell you, get on track. What's your true purpose? Where are you supposed to be going in life? Get it together already. And the card that she has for you in relationship to the themes that I've just outlined are the following. Gaia, Earth. You're the only one who got this one. Earth, Gaia. Okay, I feel called to also draw one more card for you. I don't know why, so I just follow my intuition. And Demeter, the nurturer. Isn't that funny? Demeter is the rescuer of her daughter, Persephone. Demeter, Demeter. Okay, so... Um, I'm not even going to read the nurturer. It's obvious what it means. It's the 11th card of the deck. Um, because this is a Cancer Venus and Cancer is about nurturance. And how can you nurture yourself? It flows back to you. What do you need, Pisces, to be self-nurturant, to nurture your children in a more effective way, to nurture your creative projects, to nurture your enthusiasm, innocence, and inspiration for life? But Gaia is a curious one, speaking to the Mother Earth Mother herself. So we see the Mother Earth, Earth Mother energy so profoundly engaged for you. It's crazy. 46. No, 16. It's the 16th card. I apologize. Gaia. Keep that in mind that Venus is in the house of the mother, right? The energy of cancer. And this is the earth mother. Being grounded, slowing down, remaining present in your body is the message of Gaia for right now. And perhaps you spent too much time in your head lately and haven't taken good care of yourself. Get into a rhythm get enough sleep, commit to spending more time in nature, just put your feet on the grass or the, on, I don't care, the soil, the beach, eat sustainably with conscious awareness. The earth mother of all life invites you to pay attention to your body for you are a creature of the earth as we speak. And Gaia reminds you the earth is a playground for conscious manifestation and be respectful of the truth, this truth. Well, this is perfect because, of course, this is a manifestation house, FYI. But on top of that, she's flowing to your body, right? The ascendant, if you're, your Pisces moon is definitely your body. But your ascendant is also your body and your mind and your whole persona. So for you, especially... Uh, moon and ascendant, it's really about that nurturance of your body. But if you're also looking for your Pisces sun, it's a nurturance of your career and purpose and, and, and grounding yourself in a solid foundation, just as you would ground yourself in the mother earth. I hope that's useful for everybody today. I hope it was fun to play card draw with me. Don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification in the pre live premiere. And you haven't hit the like button yet, please do. My patron community gets this early access ad free. Check it out. You can too be a part of my patron community where 350 people gather together up to the three Zoom meetings will be maybe before four meetings starting in the month of September. Uh, discounts on all my courses, even getting my monthly courses for free at one tier. Um, all kinds of perks over there. Early access to knowing when my readings are opening up. If you want to get a reading with me, I'm going to tell you. Um, read, I'll open a few spots September, October. It, the Patreon people are going to get first dibs on first spots, and you guys get second dibs on secondary spots. So for sure, you want to be over there because you're competing with 350 people to grab a spot over a 24 hour open window for September, October, I have like 1600 people on my giant public wait list. So being in my Patreon community is useful that way. That's another reason to go over for five measly bucks a month. I can't guarantee you're going to go to reading, but at least you'll have a chance to get a reading. All right. Bye everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful Venus rising.